every meeting of the council with members here with me in the Civic Centre and others at home using Microsoft Teams. First of all, can I wish happy birthday to Councillor Will Adams? Where is he? Well done, Will. <coughs> <laughs> I don't think we'll sing tonight, I think we'll keep it sober. Um, <coughs> I'll start with some domestic arrangements for the meeting for those in the Civic Centre. Fire alarms, there's none planned, and if, uh, if, they, if it does go off, uh, we go to the assembly point D in the car park. Mobile devices, please ensure that all electronic equipment that uses a SIM card is switched off. This includes all mobile phones and tablet devices using the 3G stroke 4G network. SRBC issued tablets do not contain a SIM card and will therefore not interfere with the audio system so councillors are free to use them. Members are reminded that if you wish to request to speak, please press the button on the right hand side of the unit. Press it only once you will cancel the request if you press it a second time. Requests to speak will then be listed in the order they are made. When speaking, please ensure that you angle your microphone appropriately to ensure best quality of sound. For those members wishing to speak via Microsoft Teams, please raise your hand. Please could I remind members dialing in from home to ensure that they cannot be overheard by others due to the sensitive nature of the meeting. Voting will be undertaken by roll call. The monitoring officer will call out members' names alphabetically. The meeting is being live streamed during open session for members of the public to watch. Public contributions were, request, were requested to be received in writing two working days prior to the meeting. Right, item one, apologies for absence. Are there any apologies? Yes, Chair, there, um, possibly Councillor Jackie Mort, who might be slightly late, and Councillor Jim Marsh. Thank you. Item two, minutes of the meeting on Wednesday the 15th of July 2020 of the Council. I call upon the Leader of the Council to move that the minutes be approved. Thanks Mr Mayor, I'm happy to move both sets of minutes, thank you. Is that seconded? Seconded. Thank you. Are there any questions on points of accuracy? No, thank you. Can I now sign the minutes? All agreed? Thank you. Sign them uh, after. Yeah, okay. Item three. Oh, that's the minutes. That's dealt with. Okay. Declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest? Councillor Barry Yates has declared an interest in item 22 due to his role as Chair of Development Control Committee at Lancashire County Council and he has indicated he will leave the meeting for this item. Thank you. Item 5, proposals for the election Mayor, of the Mayor. Mayor. Mr Mayor. Who is it? Councillor Green. Michael Green. Michael Green. Michael. Thanks, Mr. Thank Mayor. You, Mayor. That, that might be the last time I call you that. Um, but, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, can I declare a similar interest to Councillor Yates uh, with regard to item 22 um, as the Cabinet member involved in this particular application? Um, I will be leaving the meeting completely for this item and generally as a, cab as a county councillor on other items. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Nobody else? No? Okay. Uh, item five, proposals for the election of the mayor. Can I please ask Councillor Paul Foster to propose his nomination? Um, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, and good evening to all fellow councillors, officers and members of the public that are also joining us online. Mr. Mayor, it is my pleasure to propose my friend and colleague, Councillor Jane Bell, as Mayor of the Borough of South Ribble through until May 2022. 
Jane was first elected as a borough councillor in May 2011 for the Earnshaw Bridge Ward, along with a colleague, Councillor Bill Evans. Subsequent boundary changes meant Earnshaw Bridge, as it was, ended up being split up and some of it went into seven stars. With former council leader Tony Kelly planning to retire, Jane was then partnered with Fred Hayworth in Seven Stars and in 2015, they were both successfully re-elected. Our comrade Fred tragically died the year later, and I recall that this really did impact on Jane significantly. And it is Fred's memory, community spirit, and steadfast resolve to make things better for the local community that drives Jane forward. Mr Mayor, Jane is all about community and has spent the majority of her working life looking out for and supporting the most vulnerable. As an active member of the Labour Group, she, she actively and constantly reminds us all of our personal responsibilities of service, not self. We are all here in the Chamber to make things better for our communities, not ourselves. <coughs> Jane is a hugely respected member of the Labour Group and on behalf of the group it is my pleasure to propose her as the first citizen of the borough. The next 18 months will be colourful to say the least. The borough needs a lift whilst we are battling our way through this awful pandemic. Jane will most certainly provide it. Councillor Sue Jones will provide much more detail in a moment. To conclude Mr Mayor, I formally propose Councillor Jane Bell as the next Mayor of South Ribble. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Foster. Uh, can I now please ask Councillor Sue Jones to second the nomination? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, fellow councillors, and officers of the council, ladies and gentlemen and children, especially Jane's 11 grandchildren, who I know will be watching along with their parents, and a special welcome to everyone who has joined us on YouTube. I'm getting an update all the time on the numbers and I'll let you know at the end. It is with great pleasure and pride that I second the proposal this evening to nominate Councillor Jane Bell for the position of Mayor of South Ribble from September 2020 to May 2022. Before proceeding, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Councillor Harry Hancock and his wife Marion for their hard work during their term of office. Under very difficult circumstances, they have carried out their duties with dignity and dedication. Thank you again. As many of you know, Jane and I were elected at the same time in 2011. Jane after having retired in 2010, and Ken and I settling in South Ribble as part of our retirement plans. Our routes into serving as councillors were very different myself following a traditional route into local politics, whereas Jane, who had already spent a large amount of her time being involved in community activities, deciding she could use her experience more effectively as a councillor. Unusually, we had never met before we were elected, but in the nine years since, I would like to think we had become good friends, supporting each other through some difficult times. Becoming a single mum in 1988, Jane continued to work whilst caring for Adam, Sarah, Laurie, Emma and John. And all the time she was involved in a large number of community activities, among them being a governor of her children's schools, an active member of her church and supporting two charities close to her heart, Sleep and Key. Both of these charities involved working with troubled young people. For 20 years, Jane and her family acted as hosts and volunteers for sleep, giving a roof over the teenagers' heads and a sense of security at a difficult time in their lives. Her time as a youth worker and work with the Domestic Abuse Forum 
brought her into contact with large numbers of often vulnerable people. Whilst teaching at Runshaw College, she was able to use her talents and her love of the theatre to inspire and influence the young people in her care. Jane's community involvement has expanded over the years and now includes the Dementia Action Alliance. Jane and I proposed and seconded the motion for South Ribble Borough Council to become a dementia-friendly borough. I think we're very proud to see how it has blossomed over the years and helped so many families. As a local councillor for Seven Stars, apart from helping many individual residents, Jane has given a massive amount of support and encouragement to what is now a thriving Wade Hall Community Association. Her knowledge of the area and importantly, the people who live there has enabled this group to grow and thrive. Leyland in Bloom was an initiative which was born out of the neighborhood forum chaired by Jane. It has been an amazing success and has brought people of all ages and walks of life together to make our town a colourful and attractive place. Many of you will have heard Jane's voice from time to time on Leyland Radio. Only yesterday was the last time. Another community initiative which has grown and flourished. Many other members of the community have caused to thank Jane for her encouragement her enthusiasm and her sheer determination to make life better for everyone. I've been very anxious to ensure that I've done justice to Jane's many achievements and have spent quite a lot of extra time chatting to her over the last few weeks. I can never ever list all her achievements, but I have selected a few extra facts which you might find interesting. Jane was the company manager for the stage show of the Wombles, which toured the country, including Cardiff, Blackpool and London. As company manager, she was responsible for the whole production. But as a true trooper, she stepped onto the stage one night to play Tomsk. He was a Womble, by the way. Jane was a member of St. Ambrose Players, where she directed and performed in a variety of shows. She is fondly remembered by many budding actors in the community. Jane appeared for a certain generation in a famous film <laughs> called De Nearest and Dearest, playing the part of Vinegar Vera. <laughs> she was obviously very talented in the arts. <coughs> Jane fulfilled a lifelong dream to complete a canoe trip down the Amazon in Brazil, where one day while swimming in that mighty river, a confrontation with a water snake meant a hasty retreat. You could imagine. On a more serious note, Jane spent two separate periods in 1994 and 1999 in Uganda as a volunteer working with orphans as a result of the AIDS epidemic. And finally, she had the honour of being invited by Prime Minister Tony Blair to a reception in Downing Street to acknowledge her work in the local community. From time to time, I've asked Jane how on earth she knows so many people. I think now we know the answer. Jane's charities this year are St Catherine's Hospice, Sleep, and Clare House Women's Refuge. Obviously, under the present circumstances, fundraising and being out and about is going to be difficult. But this hasn't phased Jane, because for the time being, she's going to be a virtual mayor. Embracing this new technology hasn't been easy, but words like Zoom, Teams, WhatsApp, and YouTube are now familiar parts of our daily life. We hope the live streaming of this ceremony has reached far and wide to friends of Jane in South Africa, Singapore, Uganda, America and Belgium, as well as places throughout the UK, so that they have been able to witness and celebrate this occasion. From when Jane was elected as a councillor, there have been six special men in the Labour group who helped and advised her 
and became her friend. Councillors Jimmy Owen, Tommy Hansen, Fred Hayworth, Dave Waldridge, Dave Watts and Ken Jones would have been so proud this evening to see their colleague and friend become Mayor of South Ribble. I think it's fair to say that even without the COVID-19 epidemic, Jane's 18 month term of office was not going to be conventional. No one could have predicted what has happened in 2020. It has tested us all individually, locally and nationally. But I know for absolutely certain that Councillor Jane Bell will make us all proud to be her friend and fellow councillor and that she will be a great ambassador for our borough and its residents. In return, I ask that you will all support her and take South Ribble forward together for everyone. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I second the proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to uh, say a few words for Jane? No? Okay. Anybody else wants to be there? Okay then. Can we now take a vote, please? Thank you, Mark. Um, if there's any, if there aren't is any dissent, we will move to a roll call. Uh, does anybody wish to indicate that they would intend to vote against the proposal? I'll take that as a no. So by assent, uh, the proposal to appoint um, the mayor is approved and passed. Thank you. Are you going to ask Jane well, to sign? Yeah. Yeah. Um, have, <laughs> no, not yet. Oh, thank God for that. I can wipe my tears. The De Deputy Chief Executive will now ask the new Mayor to formally read the Declaration of Acceptance of Office and then sign the book. There you go. I don't need to say uh, it now. Uh, I already said it. <laughs> I, uh, I, Jane Bell, having been elected to the office of Mayor of South Ribble Borough Council, declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. Yeah. Announced, just oh. announced, Jane, your uh, Mayor's. Oh, no, I've never had no, no, that. No, no. I've getting a speech. I've written a speech. Come on, let me do a speech. Right, can I just say that some of the stuff that's in my speech, Sue, Sue Jones has already said so. It's her first. So she, I'm going to stop talking to her. Right. First of all, thank you. Um, I'm trying not to cry. Right, good evening, everyone. Councillors, both here and virtual. Hello, everybody at home. Uh, Officers and anybody watching on YouTube. Um, I hope you're finding this terribly stimulating for a Wednesday evening. Now a special hello to my friend Chris who is watching in Singapore because this is making this an international event. Yes, right. Right, there is a saying. Some are born to greatness, some attain greatness and some have greatness thrust upon them. I'm sure I'm in the latter. It's taken some considerable time for this to come to fruition. The past six months have been difficult to say the very least, and the next six months don't look much better and could be worse. Cold, short days and long, dark nights. I see my role as mayor in trying to keep spirits up. Ably assisted by the mayoress, Emma Sue Bell, who is up there in the balcony. So I'll say hello, she's in the gallery. At this point, I wanted to sing, you know, the guy I love is up in the gallery. But I thought it wasn't really appropriate. And apart from that, it's about a boy and not a girl. So that's my Emma up there. Emma is the number four of my five children. And she loves to dance 
and he's very fond of shoes. Have you got nice ones on tonight? Yeah, I wish I got some on tonight. But there's so much more of her inside for us all to find out about. Someone said to me uh, some time ago, at least you'll be a colourful mare. And to that end, I begin tonight as I mean to go on. My hair is pink and I am wearing my rainbow caftan. Because I like it. Because it brightens the room. And in a small way, recognising the sterling work of the NHS. And if we can't fly the pride flag, at least I can wear it. Early Christians used to have the symbol of a fish and this dress is covered in fish. So being a Christian does not make me perfect. I have my pet hates. Inconsiderate drivers who park on pavements. Inconsiderate dog owners who do not pick up and I've put here dot 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 dot. And people who don't like trees. So as a mayor, I will be encouraging the planting of trees. And I will be discouraging the use of balloons to decorate or celebrate. And I love balloons, but sadly, our environment does not. Anyone who knows me will be aware that I'm a people person, but it will look, but as mayor now, it looks as I'm going to be virtual. So I'm saying look out communications and IT, I've got lots of ideas. Having lived and worked in the community for over 40 years, I know how much the community groups have, have contributed, not just in hard times and crisis, but for many years. And I just wanted to thank them for that and carry on the good work. So as a result of being local, my chosen charities are very local. And Sue's already mentioned the Women's Refuge, Clare House, providing a safe haven for ladies and children escaping domestic abuse. Sleep, which provides emergency and long-term accommodation for young people, another safe haven. And St Catherine's Hospice, a safe haven in so many ways. Well, that's it. Well, nearly. I just want to say thank you to my family who have no idea yet just how much they're going to be involved in the next 18 months. Right. And I want to thank my fellow members for, 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 for this honour and for your support. And last but not least, Harry and Marion, who have done a wonderful job during a very difficult time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Nobody else. Okay. Item six, proposals for the election of the deputy mayor. Can I please ask Councillor David Shaw to propose his nomination? Oh, I'm out. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Jane. <laughs> oh, I do apologise. <laughs> well, no, no, you carry on, Jane. <laughs> I have, have I got my notes for this? I haven't got notes for it. You've got all the notes. You read them. I haven't, I haven't got the paperwork. He was just getting used. Now you all know what a sort of a chaos reigns in the council. <clears throat> right, I'll start again. Uh, please, can I ask, is it Councillor David Shaw to propose his nomination for Deputy Mayor? Thank you, David. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and congratulations, by the way. And thank you also to Harry for all your hard work over the 18 months. Um, I rise to nominate David Howarth as our next Deputy Mayor. Um, after superb speech by Sue and by yourself, Jane, um, this is going to be quite different, I'm afraid. A, a serious house on serious earth, if you like. Um, however, I'm going to stick to the promises that uh, I made to David when he made various suggestions about this. Um, the main one being keep it short. David said, in addition, you have to say something nice about me. <laughs> so I thought a long time about that. And it was mowing the lawn the following morning after my wife kicked me out because it was going to rain to say, um, 
actually, this is more difficult than I thought. I've only known the guy 20 years. And in due course, I might have to propose him as mayor. And then I'll have to think of something else nice to think about and say about him. It's not as though anybody seriously thinks David won't do a wonderful job of supporting, perhaps advising, if necessary, substituting for Jane, for example, if there are diary conflicts. He was first elected to this council in 1995. So in addition to having twice been mayor of Penwitham, he's seen some 20 mayors of this borough. So he should have, if called upon, some sort of clue as to what he thinks he could or couldn't get away with or do effectively. He has spent a long time now representing his red residents, taking up challenges on their behalf, and yes, gaining some satisfaction when he's been able to overcome the difficulties to make someone's life a little bit better. He said, keep it short. He said, this is Jane's day. And it's right, and that's typical of him. If I have a concern, it is that our leader being separated from us in meetings and under alphabetical voting, half of his group will have voted before him. So I'll be interested to see how he intends to get that to work, particularly if it's to be for two and a half years. That aside, I heartily encourage members to support me in voting for David Howarth as Deputy Mayor. And now can I ask Councillor Rini Blow to second the nomination? Yeah, I do second it. Uh, I've known David for quite a while and I found him very hard working for the residents of Penwitham, especially when he's on the town council as well, which he's been on there for many, many years. Too many to count, actually. But the residents of Penwitham feel that they've got a good representative in David for what he does. If they knock on the ring or knock on the door, he's there to answer their questions. And that's the main thing for residents of any borough council. Uh, so I do propose David and I hope he's going to look after me better. <laughs> which I know he will. <laughs> and it'll be very nice to be able to say to my residents that he is now the mayor, a deputy mayor leader. So can I hand it back to you? Thank you, Is there anybody else who wishes to speak? No, okay. Can we now take a vote? If there's any dissent, we can move a roll call. But thank you, Mayor. Um, is there anybody who uh, intends to vote against this proposition? Uh, on that basis, uh, Mayor, um, the proposal to elect uh, Councillor David Howarth to the role of uh, Deputy Mayor has been passed. Congratulations, David. I know will um, uh, formally read the declara declaration of acceptance. Uh, the signing will be done after uh, after the meeting due to COVID rules. Thank you. I, Councillor David Howarth, having been elected to the office of Deputy Mayor of South River Borough Council, hereby declare that I take the said office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties thereof according to the best of my judgment and ability. Right, David, do you want to say a few words? I've lost you, I can't. Thank you, yes. If I could first of all uh, thank my proposer and seconder um, for their very kind words and thank all the members of council um, for conferring this very much an honour uh, upon me. 
Um, I think as David has uh, said originally, this is Jane's night and it's very unfortunate tonight that we can't have the full mayor making ceremony um, and we can't have the, the, the formalities that we used to. But I just look forward to that taking place perhaps once we've got through COVID, uh, perhaps next May when we can have a much more formal occasion and hopefully you can fully enjoy uh, being, well, you, you, you will have served for six months by then, but fully enjoy um, all of the ceremony that should have taken place tonight. Um, all I can say is I will keep this short and sweet. Uh, it is your night tonight, Jane. I wish you every success. Uh, I hope that you enjoy the experience for, for as long as you're, you serve as mayor. And all I can say is that any help and support I can give you, I will do so gladly. But before I do the next bit, can I just say that uh, I've decided that I would like to be referred to as a mayor during the full council meetings, not Mr. Mayor or Madam Mayor. Mr. Mayor and Madam Mayor, it sort of takes the gender out of it. And it, it um, so please refer to as, me as mayor, um, if you can remember. But I won't be offended if you forget, but, but try it. But I thought it was sort of middle of the road and pleases everybody. So if you can refer to me as mayor, I will be. Either that or your worship, but I thought that might be going a bit too far. So, yeah, I quite fancied your worship, but, you know, I was, I was uh, persuaded not to. Okay. Now then, I've got to say, um, I know, I, I know I've got to be nice to Councillor Howarth now, it says it here on my thing. It says the mayor will pay tribute to the retiring mayor emeritus. <coughs> Can I just say, I think that, that Harry and Marion have, have been absolutely wonderful. And I just want to say thank you again to them for all the hard work they've done. And it's been so difficult this last six months. Um, and I, I just, just wanted on behalf of everybody to just say thank you to you both very much so whether it's playing tribute or it's saying thank you i mean it doesn't matter but i do think you've done a smashing job and you're extremely nice people as well yes so we try yeah <laughs> try to be so can i please now invite group leaders to say a few words thank you your worship <laughs> <laughs> well got off to a good start mayor haven't we we've got to get off to a good start um, fair, reasonable, welcoming, thoroughly hardworking, extremely dapper. I think we'll all do even that. Now, I know Councillor McTitherington's not happy with this, but I do think you're the most dapper mayor we've had in many years, Harry. Except you can tell your military background and your police background, you're any, everywhere you go, throughout the borough, exceptionally smart, as is Marion. Although I can feel the eyes looking in the back of my hair there. Wonderful, wonderful ambassadors for the borough and I've accompanied you both on many many trips throughout the borough and meeting before Covid kicked in meeting many people here in the Civic Centre and um, without doubt every single individual enjoyed meeting you both. Taking over as a mayor and mayoress after an election is never easy it's always a challenge and especially when there's a new administration as well but um, Harry you've, and Marion you've done yourselves your family and the council absolute credit and on behalf of the Labour group thank you thank you very much anybody else want to say anything councillor Howarth uh, thank you mayor um, I had the honour of proposing Harry as mayor um, 18 months ago now um, it was under very difficult circumstances. Uh, we, we just had an election, we'd had a change of administration. And I'm sure that at a different time and under different circumstances, Harry's morality would have been welcomed by everybody yeah, in this chamber and on the council. Um, he, there were three aspects of, of uh, how he was an excellent mayor for this, for this borough. First and foremost was his chairmanship. Um, he has used his calm, mild-mannered approach and I think the way he has chaired meetings um, has been a credit. Um, he's been an ambassador for the borough. I, I know that 
when he's been at events outside of the borough, he's sought out, uh, particularly school children at events uh, from South Ribble, uh, gone up and talked to them, made himself very well known. Um, and he has been diligent in the role of mayor. Um, he's also been a fundraiser for his charities, and, and it's very unfortunate that um, his time as mayor or his ability to, to fundraise and to attend functions uh, swiftly came to an end on my birthday on the 23rd of March when we went into lockdown. Um, so he's not had the ability to, to add to his mayoral charities since that time, um, which I'd rather welcome because my wallet was getting a bit of a battering, to be honest. With you. But he has raised um, a lot of funds for his chosen charities, which were St. Catherine's Hospice, Derrien House and Heartbeat Northwest. And I'm sure he's had a lot of pleasure and enjoyment in doing that. So if I could just thank Harry and Marion, who have both been friends of mine for many years, um, for the contribution they've made as Mayor and Mayoress. And I hope that you, and I'm sure you have had a wonderful experience and enjoyed every minute of it. Anybody else? I've not got anybody on my, my on my machinery. I've, it's wonderful. This <coughs> I'm ever so chuffed with it. Yeah, but nobody else wants to speak. Right, right. Now then, I'd like to introduce a short video in recognition to thank Harry Hancock and Marion for the work he's been doing as mayor of the borough in the last last twelve months, eighteen months. So. Have we got it? Or oh, technology? I just want to say a huge thank you on behalf of St Catherine's for all your support for our hospice in your role as Mayor of South Ribble all last year. And you came to the Christmas Fair last year and to Yellow Day. Um, your support has been really valuable and it's really difficult here uh, and I wish you all the future. Hello, this is Louise from Heartbeat. A message to say thank you so very much to Mayor Councillor Hancock for all his support this year. Although it's been a really strange year, um, we are really, really grateful as a team, and I'm sure all of our class members will be very enthusiastic to say thank you for your support over the year. Um, you know that this money will go towards helping people who have had heart problems or are at risk of heart problems and help them to maintain that life and live to be their best fitness that they possibly can be. And we'd like to thank you for supporting us. On behalf of all the children, young people and staff at Darien House Children's Hospice, I'd like to offer my congratulations to Councillor Harry Hancock on completing his year in office as Mayor of South Ribble. We were fortunate to be chosen by Councillor Hancock as one of his official charities during his mayoral year. And we have been benefiting from not only the funds raised throughout the year, but also the great publicity it has brought. Although I expect the year hasn't really gone exactly as planned, we were lucky enough to welcome the Mayor and Mayoress to our hospice on a couple of occasions and were proud to show them around our newly refurbished building. It's only due to the generosity of supporters such as Councillor Hancock that we are able to carry out such work and create uh, top class facilities for seriously ill children across South Ribble and of course across the whole of the North West. We hope the Mayor and Mayoress enjoyed their visit to Darien. We certainly did. On one particular memorable occasion last year, they were encouraged to put on devil's horns and witches' hats to join in the Halloween group photographs with all the children. It was great fun. So congratulations, Mr. Mayor, on a wonderful mayoral year. And just want to say thank you so much for your kindness and generosity.
of these kits, lovely. And now you've done a lot. I didn't think you'd done as much as that, Harry. Uh, yeah. Now I'd like now I'd like to ask Councillor Hancock. Would he like to say a few words? <coughs> right. Uh, th th my introduction is for people that may well be looking in uh, uh, on this on this meeting. So I'm going to start off by saying, Henri Freeman, Mayor. Reverend Sir, fellow councillors, officers of the council, relatives and friends. It's been a funny old year, but a very enjoyable one, meeting many people from all over the functions we have attended, both within and outside of our borough. It started off with a royal visit by His Royal Highness Duke of Kent, when he visited the Leyland Museum and also the Veterans Cafe. We have had numerous visits to schools, local amateur groups, which are excellent, churches, community events, award ceremonies, Christmas functions with lots of mince pies, visits to industry, to our local hospices, and to several lively senior citizens parties, to name but a few. We have lit bonfires, turned on lights, presented cups and certificates, and even got a little wet when joining with the Leyland Barracudas at their annual gala. That's poolside, not taking part. We have ridden in the Pope Mobile at the Leyland Festival and were very glad of it when the heavens opened halfway round. We have met Gina Campbell, daughter of the late Don Donald Campbell, when we unveiled a plaque on the 65th anniversary of the handing over of the K7 Bluebird boat, which was built at Salmsbury Engineering. This site now forms part of the golfing range at Salmsbury Hall. What has been really noticeable over the year is the vast numbers of dedicated volunteers of all ages who give their time and energy organising and running all the various events around the borough. Events which at times wouldn't have taken place without all their hard work. We have thoroughly enjoyed getting to know the other mayors, both within and outside South Ribble, at the various joint events held over the year. All this, of course, would not have been possible without the help and support of a number of people. To Jane, for all her cheerfulness, support and friendship as the Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Jane, and I wish you a happy and successful year of office. To Tracy, up in the gallery, who organises all the functions and events for the whole of the mayoral year and make sure things run smoothly. Some of the other mayors do not have this support and are very envious that they have to do all the arranging and organising themselves. So Tracy, a very big thank you from both of us. We really couldn't have done it without you. To Dave, the Mayor's attendant, who knows where all the different venues are and make sure we arrive on time and suitably chained up. Thank you, Dave, and look after that new car. To all the officers of the council who have assisted and helped me during my term of office and kept me on the right track, thank you to all of you. To all my fellow councillors who have supported me and have joined in with various organised events, thank you. To my ministers, the Reverend Mark Slaney for officiating at my civic service, the Reverend Paul Davis for my first council meeting and to the Reverend John Maiden for serving as my chaplain. And finally, to Marion, my mayoress, for all her support and encouragement. Thank you. Although we were unable to complete our full year due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it has been a privilege, honour and a delight for both Marion and I to serve our borough as mayor and mayoress. Thank you all very much. Well, thank you, Councillor Hancock, and 
<laughs> farewell. <laughs> Thank you and farewell. You shall still be here. And I have to advise you that we will now move on to the business of the council. So, Lady Mayoresses, if you wanted to go now, you can. <laughs> we'll get to the boring bit now. Item eight on the agenda. Everybody, can I please ask the leader of the council, Councillor Paul Foster, to present his report of cabinet to the council? Um, thank you, Paul. Can I just say you don't have to stand up if you don't want to? Thanks. Um, I would prefer yeah. to stand. And I'll keep getting my neck cut out, but see Carl's on it really quickly. Um, uh, Mayor, the, I'd like to present, please, if I may, the. Um, the report of the Cabinet held on the 5th of August 2020, along with the report of the Cabinet of the 16th of September 2020, which is contained within the supplementary agenda pack, which was issued. Um, there's numerous updates in there on many issues that were debated at Cabinet. Uh, I'm not uh, planning, Mayor, to, to detail anything, but I'm happy to accept any questions any members may have. Thank you. Is that seconded? seconded. Thank you. Have we got any any questions, any remarks, any comments? No. Thank you. That's noted. Item nine. Governance Committee. Can I call upon the Chair of Governance Committee, Councillor Ian Watkinson, to present his report? I believe Ian is remote. Is he? I certainly am. Can you present your report, please, Ian? I can, thanks, Mayor. This is the general report of the Governors' Committee for the meeting held on Monday 28th of August uh, for the consideration of the Council. The Committee received a verbal update from the Council's external auditor, Grant Thornton, and we were advised that progress was continuing for the audits for 2018-2019 and also 2019 2019-2020. And we're also advised that a detailed plan was being produced in order to ensure that the audits were completed as quickly as possible. And we've had assurances since that that will be done by November. Uh, we also heard from the Deputy Director of Finance and Section 151 Officer, and he sought to present the draft statement of accounts for 2019 to 2020. The committee were also advised on the statutory requirements and the role of members and we were pleased to note that a member briefing session would be arranged and that did take place and held for all members prior to the accounts being finalised. That's all to be considered for this meeting. Thanks to the officers. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, Councillor Charples. Uh, anybody got any comments or? No, okay. Can we note that report, please? Item 10, Scrutiny Committee. Can I call upon the Chair of the Scrutiny Committee, Councillor David Howarth, to present his report to the Council? Thank you, Mayor. Yes, if I could uh, present the report of the Scrutiny Budget and Performance Panels held on the 3rd of August and the 14th of September. Uh, our recommendations are as set out. Um, and if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. So uh, move that, Mayor. Thank you. Is that seconded? I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, now then, can we know, has anybody got anything to say? Councillor Green? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good, good evening, Mayor. Good evening. Um, um, may, may I ask the Chairman of the Scrutiny yeah. Committee um, um, why I, he said it is not appropriate to consider um, the South Hibble corporate strategy, which we're considering later this evening at item 14. Um, but to be considered by the full scrutiny committee rather than going to the scrutiny budget and performance panel. Uh, this is particularly given that uh, the recent scrutiny committee was cancelled. Uh, we've not held a scrutiny committee for some months now uh, and the last one was cancelled due to, uh, to what was stated as being a lack of business. Well, I would have thought considering the South Hibble's corporate strategy which is such an important document for this council moving forward uh, would have been a wonderful opportunity for all scrutiny members to be engaged in the process. 
Uh, that's not to, to pay any discredit whatsoever to the members of the Budget and Performance Panel, who I'm sure um, those members considered it um, as fully as they were able to. But I think that the document would have been better had it been considered by the full scrutiny committee. Thank you. Alice? Thank you for that question. Um, it may well be that you're quite correct that it, it might have been better going to scrutiny. Um, I mean, all of the members of the scrutiny committee are invited to put forward um, suggestions and proposals as to what we should scrutinise. Um, perhaps it's unfortunate that you weren't able to put that proposal forward for it to go to full scrutiny. Um, but we're certainly, certainly as chair, and I'm sure um, our lead officer is more than happy to hear from any member of scrutiny or any member of the council for that matter as to what they would like the full scrutiny committee to actually um, dive down into. So any future suggestions are welcome. I'm sorry that you feel it might have been more appropriate to go to full scrutiny, uh, but on this occasion it was the, the performance panel that actually looked at it. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else need anything to say, Councillor Smith? This is going to be difficult. Thank you, Mayor. I'll get that bit right to start with, shall I? Um, it's not easy after many years of doing it the other way around. Um, it, it, it's just a comment, really, uh, with regard to uh, this, that particular um, the budget panel and, and the minute that's in, in here, which is a one, two, three, fourth bullet point down. Uh, and in there, it's, uh, there was a question asked about the leisure campus, and, the, and it says there that it was felt that the costs of the leisure campus were not affordable for the council, and that was a reason for not completing it. Um, that is not true in the sense that that is not the reason that it wasn't completed. It was in the budget, it was in the corporate plan, and indeed uh, what was in there and what we were proposing could have been delivered. Uh, just to clarify that point, Mr. Mayor. I've, there, I've let myself down there, calling you Mr. Mayor. Councillor Howard? With respect, that may well be your opinion as opposed to a clarification, but we, we question uh, those that come before the scrutiny panel and we make recommendations um, on the uh, answers that were given and the information we're provided with. So while you may have the opinion that it was de uh, deliverable, that isn't necessarily um, the feeling of the new administration that had to take this forward. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Smith. Um, it is not just my opinion, it was the opinion of the whole of the uh, Conservative group at, yeah. the, <clears throat> at that particular council meeting when the budget and corporate plan was, was, um, was proposed and accepted. Um, I'll say no more, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All right, thank you. Let's leave it at that then. Can we note the reports of the Scrutiny Committee? Thank you. Item 11, changes to committee appointments. Members are advised that additional changes to committee appointments have been submitted and can be found in the supplementary agenda two, starting on page 153. Call upon the Leader of the Council, Councillor Paul Foster, to move the recommendations in the report. Happy to move them, Mayor. Thank you. That's yeah, say yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, are there any questions? We're not into questions. We need to. Yeah, are we going to the vote? Are we happy with? With, with the recommendations? Yeah? Oh, sorry. Sorry, Councillor Evans. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd just like to comment on the removal of Councillor Cliff Hughes from the uh, Planning Committee. Uh, I find it a shame, actually. I'm quite shocked at the amount of experience Councillor Hughes has had on planning. Uh, I've learnt a lot of him over the years, and I feel it's a shame that he's, he's had to go. Thank you, Mayor. Councillor Margaret Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, we have made a change um, and we have discussed it with Councillor Hughes. And we would like to say our very great thanks to Councillor Hughes for all the work he has done on his planning committee. Um, but we feel that at this moment in time, the changes are appropriate for what we want to do. Thank you. Can we move it to the vote, please? Are we doing the discern? Yeah. Uh, is, are there any people opposed, uh, any members opposed to the proposals, uh, proposed changes to committee membership? 
Uh, in the absence of any uh, members opposed, then the proposal is passed. Thank you. Item 12. Uh, private hire vehicle livery. I call upon the Chair of Licensing and Public Safety Committee, Councillor James Flannery, to move recommendations. I think James is at home uh, on Teams Thanks, somewhere. Man. Thank you. Good evening, James. Good evening, Good evening. Man. Okay, at the meeting of the Licensing and Public Safety Committee in March, the committee received a report which invited members to recommend the formal adoption of the new proposed private hire signage and corporate signage policy. Members were advised that a consultation had been undertaken and 64 responses have been received, all in favour of the proposed changes to a new proposed private hire vehicle sign. Out of the 64 responses, there was only one against, and the proposed change to the size and location was proposed. At the meeting, the committee agreed that the report should be taken to the next full council meeting, which is this one, with the recommendation of a full, to formally adopt the amended policy. So the report's contained there, Mayor, if anyone's got any questions. Indeed. Yes, thank you. Uh, are there any questions from any members of the council? No. Right. Can we, we vote on that one? Can we vote on that, okay. please? Uh, are there any members opposed to the proposals in the report? In the absence of any uh, opposition to the proposals, uh, they, they are passed. Item 13, proposal of annual licensing of vehicles. Call upon the Chair of Licensing and Public Safety Committee, Councillor Jane Flannery, to move recommendations to the report. Thank you, Councillor. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, okay, once again, at the same meeting, in March, the committee received the report and invited members to recommend the formal adoption of the proposal to change from six monthly to 12 monthly license for Hackney Carriage and private hire vehicles licensed by the authority. Members were advised that after consultation of 61 responses, 60 agreeing to the proposed changes. So uh, the committee agreed that the report should be taken to this meeting, the full council, with the recommendation to formally adopt the amended policy. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, is that seconded? Thank you, Councillor Rainsworth. Uh, are there any questions from any members of the council? No, no. Right, can we vote on that, please? Again, councillors, um, can any, is anyone there indicating that they intend to oppose these proposals? No, in the absence of any opposition to the proposals, uh, they are passed. Thank you. Item 14, South Rebel Corporate Strategy. Call upon the, the leader of the council, Councillor Paul Foster, to move the recommendations in the report. Thanks, Mayor. Um, just very quickly and briefly, Mayor, before I start, um, I would say to, to Councillor Green that you know that he's, there has been two opportunities for him to really feed into this strategy, if he'd wish. There's the obviously the scrutiny subcommittees that have been mentioned, but also at the cabinet. This went before the cabinet as well. And again, he could have fed into the cabinet if he wished any comments. And as we've listened to all members across the council and the public, we would have listened to any comments he had. And I would encourage in the future, please join in. If you want to join in, join in. We are here to listen. Mayor, our vision is simple. A healthy and happy community flourishing together in a safer and fairer borough that is led by a council recognised for being innovative, do that deal, financially sustainable, and most importantly, accountable. And that's been added in deliberately after what's happened the last three or four years with the governance failings of this authority. <clears throat> it is at the heart of our council and everything we do. It means a relentless focus on creating the conditions, partnerships and services that support improvements in the lives of our residents, ensuring they have opportunities to succeed and thrive. We are living in challenging times that will fundamentally change our borough. Residents, communities and businesses will need more support now and into the future. As a council, we need to make sure that we set up and ready to meet the challenge, working differently to help find solutions that work for local places and neighbourhoods. We also want to build quickly on the work that we've started to enhance within South Ribble and do even more to make it a great place to live, particularly through the community hubs. This strategy presents our four refreshed priorities. We want South Ribble to have 
an exemplary council, thriving communities, a fair local economy that works for everyone, good homes, green spaces and healthy places. Because a strategy is more than just words, we have set out the activity and projects that we will deliver towards these priorities and the outcomes that will be achieved for South Ribble. I hope you will all see this strategy as a commitment from the Council to support, listen and work to develop a healthy, fairer and more sustainable borough where everybody can achieve their full potential. Mayor, Vicky Willett and the team have done a fantastic job over the summer in revising this corporate strategy with us and I publicly would like to thank her for the work that she's done. We're presenting it in a slightly different way this time to make it more user friendly. But what you have there is 12 to 18 months plus of relentless focus on delivering us through COVID, our communities and our businesses. And I commend the new corporate strategy to council. Thank you. Is that seconded? Thank you. Yes, thank you, yeah, Mayor, whoever you are at the front. Are there any questions from any uh, members? Yes, Councillor. Uh, in, well, in, in seconding, I just want to say uh, a few words. Um, first of all, uh, congratulations to yourself. Uh, and I'm sorry for those mistakes that I made, but I promise to improve. But I wish you every success in, in the future. Um, but I'm uh, more than happy to uh, second the report. I think uh, given all that has gone on, the circumstances that we've spoken about earlier, the challenges that we've had to meet, it was right and proper that we uh, revisited the uh, corporate uh, plan to uh, see that it was still fit for purpose um, and, and appropriate. Uh, and I think uh, the result is that what we have before us is a clear, concise piece of work that sets out our vision, the, the council that we want to be, where everybody matters, a council that works for all, uh, a council that cares about the environment and cares about people being uh, in a safe um, place in which they can flourish, where they can have rewarding, satisfying jobs, live in decent homes and have easy access to leisure and breathe clean air. So we bring within this document, we bring the communities together. Uh, but not only that, we have the vision, but we also have the, uh, the report in there and the backing about how we're going to deliver our vision uh, and bring it into uh, reality. So uh, I also, I mean, as uh, Councillor Foster said, we've also introduced the accountability in there. So what we have before us in the corporate plan is a, <clears throat> is a, is a vision. It's backed up with how we're going to deliver it and it's also got the accountability <clears throat> that it should be in there to see that we believe. I believe it's presented in a clear way that's easy to read um, and uh, prepared uh, in, in such a way um, uh, that we can move forward. So I'm happy to second it and I think it's probably being prepared in a document that even the Prime Minister could read. Thank you. Sir. Are there any other questions or comments? I've got uh, Councillor Blinsky Gelder, please. Just a comment. Um, thank you, Mayor. I'd like to take this opportunity to outline what we mean by social value. It's mentioned in the corporate strategy and it was a question asked at the Cabinet meeting. So I think it's really important for us as leaders in our communities to always be looking to the horizon for new innovative ideas. Our communities should be able to count on us to make good decisions in their interests. So when we hear new words or see them in reports, I encourage members not to shy away from them and ask us not to use them, but rather try to understand them, allow for constructive debate and exploration of new ideas. After all, we only, really, we, all, we only really need to Google something nowadays and after a few minutes, we're all experts. So, social value. Social value isn't simply a nice turn of phrase which makes use, which may be used to fluff up projects or even negated, saying it's too difficult to understand or interpret. 
Social value is constituted in law with the Public Services Social Value Act, which came into force on the 31st of January 2013. It requires people who commission public services to think about how they can also secure wider social, economic and environmental benefits. This means that councils which procure millions of pounds worth of goods and services annually should be considering the wider impact of their spending. The Conservative government states the Act is a tool to help commissioners get more value for money out of procurement. It also encourages commissioners to talk to their local provider market or community to design better services, often finding new innovative solutions to difficult problems. This isn't about finding the cheapest price, but the most long lasting benefit for communities, the environment and society. There are many examples of councils up and down the country going above and beyond the requirements of the Social Value Act, and we are way, and we're way ahead of South Ribble. Halton Council aspires to include one social value outcome in every procurement. Liverpool City Council has developed a governance framework, including a fair city framework, which embedded social value throughout procurement and the commissioning cycle. Gloucestershire County Council embedded social value throughout the tender process when it sought a new IT provider as a significant business requirement, not as a nice to have. As a result, the council now has a service focused on driving greater value for money, social value and delivery of its strategic plan. Anyone still wishing to argue that social value isn't value for money, I will argue is it is more than value for money. It is value for people, it is value for the environment and it is value for the economy. And I would advise them to visit gov.uk Social Value Act Information and Resources. Finally, for local residents, this shift in purchasing means more of their own tax money is potentially spent in the local area with local firms, more apprenticeships created, increasing jobs and skills in South Ribble. And when large spending decisions are made, the environmental impacts are also being taken into consideration. It may be the golden thread helping South Ribble to recover after the second national crisis in 10 years, creating greater security for families, greater opportunities and a fairer, safer borough for all as set out in the corporate strategy. Thank you. Yeah, and I've got Councillor Bretherton. I've got Councillor Bretherton. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, there's some good points in this in this document. Um, I like the some of the sentences, residents, uh, places where residents have a positive mental health, uh, grows and supports sustainable businesses, a choice of decent, affordable housing, commitment to protecting the local environment, a choice of quality recreational facilities. They're all good points. There are other aspects of the report. Um, to grow local wealth, use of land. Um, and we can relate that, if we go back to the Mackenzie Arms site, which I, I re referred to a few times. Um, unfortunately, I, can't, I can't, still can't relate to the value for money, uh, especially in relation to the Mackenzie Arms site. We, we, we would like to see uh, affordable housing on that site, but we believe uh, that there are we, we believe there's an opportunity to create uh, better value. Um, it, there's a cap of £100,000 per property. If we could build them for £100,000 each, the £2.2 million could have, could have got us an extra seven homes, if not that on that site, somewhere else maybe. So I, I am struggling to some extent on, on the word value for money, and it has been brought up a few times. I, I know I'm a novice to this, this council. I've not been here that long. Um, I did, I did actually do some Google searches, uh, what is value for money? It's something that is good value and not expensive or is worth what you pay for it. I, I'm just wondering for the, for the benefit of myself and any, any new colleagues uh, here, would it be worth having a learning hour, uh, the, the council's view of what is value for money? Because I'm, I, I am still struggling uh, with, with the, those words. Thank you, Mayor. Fire point for myself, really. You're talking about value for money, and we've had social value, which are quite different things. So, so it's it's not to be mixed. So possibly, 
you know, learning now to, to, to discern the difference for everybody might be useful. But I think we've got to be very clear in council what we are actually talking about. Are we talking about value for money or are we talking about social values? And, and, and this is really important for everybody, especially if other people are watching on YouTube. They're going to be just as confused as everybody else. We really must use the right terms for the right definitions. Yes, Councillor Foster. Yeah, just to uh, Councillor Bretherton, um, you never know, the Mackenzie Arms might come up later for discussion, but the, um, I think it's important that um, Councillor Bretherton and members of the Conservative group do understand what value for money is, because it's not just cash value. And um, particularly as Councillor Bretherton's on the Governance Committee as well, he certainly needs to know what the term value for money means in respect to local government and I will arrange for his training. Thank you. Is he, is he remote? Yes, yeah. Oh, good evening, councillor. Councillor Colin Clark. Good evening, councillor. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you for <coughs> asking me to uh, speak. Um, I've, I've, I've listened to what um, Councillor Titherington said, and he refers to the corporate strategy as a vision. And um, Councillor Foster says the failings of the previous governance committee, of which he was a member. What I've looked at is it's a two year strategy. Um, and obviously, I, I welcome it and I, I'll, I'll certainly vote for it because it has some very good points. But is it intended to produce a, a detailed plan for each of the ne next two years? Uh, because this uh, is necessary to aid the budget setting process, uh, to um, aid uh, monitoring of the performance and also accountability. Because I, I believe there is sufficient detail in that for the Governors Committee in future or any other members uh, to scrutinise um, uh, the strategy as it progresses. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just to clarify something, I, uh, Councillor Clark, I said the corporate governance failures of the previous administration, not the governance committee, just so we're clear on that. And he knows all about that anyway, because he was on the previous administration and he sat in front of the auditors when they were mentioning to you, Councillor Clark, that they're forensically uh, investigating the last year of your administration as we speak. So we'll wait to see what happens with that. In respect to the uh, the role in corporate plan, is right, this is two years. I have absolutely no doubt, and I've already spoken to Vicky and the Chief Executive about this. We will be reviewing this in six months' time. We'll be reviewing it again in 12 months' time. What we must ensure as a council is that our corporate strategy is what our people need and what our businesses need. We do not know what we face in the next six months. It looks dark, potentially. So we may yet still need to change the corporate strategy once again, Colin. However, it is a rolling, rolling beast. That's why we've brought this down to two years now, because we realise there will be changes and we need to be fleet of foot and able to make those changes. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Councillor Michael Green. Thank you. Um, there, there clearly is some some good items within this uh, corporate strategy and I'd like to commend the officer that, that's written it and presented it in a very clear manner, um, which is very, very attractive for the average reader to actually look at the document. So, so that's to be commended. Um, Councillor Foster was right in his comments that comments could have could have been made at the cabinet meeting. That, that's quite right. But, but obviously that allows for certain comments. Um, the, the strategy being considered by the full scrutiny committee would have allowed members to delve into it in a little bit more detail to announce some of the positives and may, maybe amend some of the other parts of it. And it's just really, really to just remind colleagues, I'm sure Councillor Foster would, would agree with me, that scrut the scrutiny committee plays a very valuable role in supporting the council as a whole to make sure that we come forward with, with the very best documents that we can do as a council and ultimately, in turn, the very best policies for the residents of South Hibble. Thank you. Councillor Foster. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree, uh, Councillor Green, and as he's aware, um, the new administration um, actively seeks the scrutiny committee's input into everything that we do, which is completely 
different to anything that's happened in this authority over the last 13 years. Um, we encourage scrutiny, we want to see scrutiny, and sometimes, you know, the truth hurts, Margaret, doesn't it? But however, the scrutiny has a fundamentally important part to play in this, in this authority moving forward, as it has done for the last 18 months. Thank you. Councillor Trafford. That, thank you, Mayor. It's nice to do my first speech with, with you as our Mayor now. Um, one of the things that, that haven't been mentioned thus far um, in, the, in the debate is the new um, policy in relation to young people's mental health support. Um, and it's a bit of a close to the bone thing to speak about for, for me, really. Um, it's something that I, I suffer with my own mental health problems um, and uh, I've worked very hard working with a lot of young people since being elected who also do. And I don't want it to be understated how important this is, because I think this is one of the things that when I look back in the future, I'll look at that and think I'm really glad that that was one of the things that I fed in. So whilst I've been member champion for youth, um, I've represented two um, different families in, in, governance, uh, in uh, governor's meetings at schools, um, where the school simply doesn't have the resources to support their uh, mental wellbeing needs. Um, one of those families are watching tonight, actually, they're very pleased with this. Um, I've also been to the youth zone over the road um, and when I visited there the thing that sort of left me in tears when I, when I left was a young girl telling me that she's been on a waiting list for so long that she decided to take an overdose of paracetamol to prove that she was depressed <laughs> enough to get support. Now in what world is that acceptable? And it isn't and I think it's very good that we now sort of have a council that's prepared to try and fill some of these gaps. In Blackpool, um, so on, only up the road, they now have um, 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 our older children um, now sell um, self-harm kits um, that contain razor blades and, and, and cotton uh, because the demand for people physically hurting themselves is that high. And then the thing as well that upsets me in all of this, and this is why it's so important that as a council we're doing this, is because for the poorer people in the borough, they are at more risk because if you're from a family like mine where you sort of are relatively well off in, in many ways and can afford for well, since I was young to see uh, someone privately, I don't, I'm not on that list. But the people who don't have that privilege are on that list. Um, I think that this is so important um, and I'm grateful for uh, your listening to me here and, and I just didn't want this to be understated because this is the thing that I've spent a lot of time banging on about and uh, thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Trafford. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Smith, I've got you first on my list and then... Thank you. document I did attend the um, briefing last night um, and there are some extremely good things in here um, and we're first um, we're quite happy to support what is good um, I have some reservations about some of the things that are in here um, but nevertheless um, because there are some good things in we, we will support it this evening I think the difficulty is that sometimes we tend to stray away from what is our council business into other areas and that can then lead difficulties when we're trying to monitor how far we can go and how much actual expertise we can actually draw in to help some of these things. Nevertheless, um, as I say, there are some good things in here uh, and therefore we will be supporting it this evening. I do take exception to the constant carping that I have put it as carping that Councillor Foster does about the last administration for the last 13 years. Everybody makes mistakes in life but that we did some very good things over those 13 years and I will not have that taken away from us. We did always consult with people. The scrutiny committee particularly was extremely active. Active I have to say under the chairmanship of the Labour people, Councillor Tomlinson and Councillor um, um, Tithington, uh, who were very active chairman and very good chairman. And I'm not going to take anything away from them because they did actually consult an awful lot. 
Um, and I do think the, the um, scrutiny committee didn't meet and has been cancelled uh, for lack of business seems very bizarre to me uh, when I'm sure that there are plenty of things that we can actually at this moment in time be investigating or looking into either portfolios or even out some a number of outside bodies that can be brought in. Uh, I know it's difficult with COVID at the moment, but there are things that we can actually um, look into that would be for the benefit of our residents. Um, so as I say, while there are some extremely good things in here, I do have some reservations about some of the things that are going forward um, in this document this evening. Thank you. And you can take note of some of the things that Councillor Smith has said, um, and we will now move to Councillor Foster. Smith, um, I won't speak for the scrutiny committee. That all I can tell you is that I've been in front of the scrutiny committee at least twice in the last uh, four weeks, and the scrutiny committee work exceptionally hard, as do all councillors. Um, just to correct Mrs. Smith slightly, um, it was 12 years of a Conservative administration, not 13. Um, the other point I'd correct her on is I've never once ever criticised the scrutiny committee. The scrutiny committee for the past 12 years under the Conservative administration put numerous recommendations forward to the Cabinet. The problem was the Cabinet never accepted them. Moving on to the um, comments she made about the corporate strategy. I'm pleased that she's supporting and this Conservative group will support the corporate strategy because fundamentally it's about our people and it's about our businesses and that's what we're here to, that's what we're here for um, the comments regarding that would possibly strain outside of where our authority lies um, good good because I'm not one nor are the administration for taking no for an answer and we always if you all if you take no for an answer and draw lines in the ground sometimes you'll achieve nothing now and for Councillor Trafford who I commend for having the courage to stand up and say what he said in front of council. I commend him and I also commend him for the pressure and the, um, the dialogue that he had with the administration and ensuring that young people's and the general mental health of our community is a priority for this council because it is a priority for this council. And I will break down every barrier I need to break down to ensure that we bring the support that our community needs. I'm aware that the South River Partnership, because we had a meeting on this just Friday of last week, young people's mental health is a priority for them working with this council. I'm aware that is it the Chorley Public Works Board, a priority for them is young people's mental health. So what we're doing, I'm pleased to announce, the two boards, the two partnerships, are gonna to get together very quickly. And we're gonna see what we can do together with the NHS to support our young people, all our community, that are suffering dreadful mental health challenges, which are only going to get worse, Mayor, only going to get worse through winter. And I'll never accept no for an answer. We do everything we can. And I commend, I commend this corporate strategy and all the comments from all members. And I'd like to make progress. Thank you. Now I have Councillor Smith again. Uh, yes, Margaret. Thank you, Bear. It's just a quick comment. Some of the recommendations that came out of scrutiny were certainly accepted by the administration. It is wrong to say that no, uh, no recommendations were ever accepted. That is wrong. And I just wanted to correct that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Um, it gets increasingly difficult to uh, take Councillor Foster seriously. It really does. Some of the comments that he makes. Um, um, right, I'm, I'm stopping. I'm stopping it now because we're getting a bit tit for tat, and I, I don't like it on a personal level, and I just don't like it in meetings. So I accept what you're saying, but don't let's carry on in this in this mode because one, it is not good behaviour for a council. And two, bearing in mind we are being watched on YouTube and we have no idea what they will be thinking of us. And I really don't want us to be called into, into account for our behaviour. So thank you very much for your comments, but let's move on. OK, so can we take uh, the vote on this now, please? Okay. 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, are there any members who intend to vote against the proposal to adopt the new corporate strategy? Thank you. In light of the absence of dissent, uh, we can accept that, that uh, the proposal is passed. Okay. Thank you. Item 15 is the Leyland Town Deal and the Town Investment Plan. And I call upon the Cabinet Member Planning and Regeneration and City Deal Council Bill Evans to move the recommendations in the report. Thank you, Mayor. It gives me great pleasure to present this report to Council tonight. Uh, it all started was in September last year, the central government or the Ministry for Housing, Communities and Local Government to be, to be exact, announced uh, investment in 101 towns up and down the country. They had £3.6 billion to spend and wanted to regenerate these areas. Places such as Blackpool, Preston, Milton Keynes, Oldham, Rochdale, Southport and Leyland. <laughs> Don't know why, but they chose it. There was a bit of a hiccup right at the beginning because the town boundary that they suggested included parts of Kewardon, but not Worden Park or certain parts of Moss Side. So we had to contact the Office for National Statistics and get the boundary redone. But then they came back to us in November and said, this is the way forward. We have to put this, fill this 47 page, the 47 question questionnaire in if, if you want to bid and uh, you can bid up to £25 million and the, uh, that questionnaire had to be uh, sent back in by the end of December. Uh, meanwhile, they'd give us an idea of how to put the uh, a, a town board together and we, we went to a number of organisations, I'll, I'll, I'll reel some of them off, Runcher College, CW Berry, UCLan, Leyland Trucks, Dr Oka, Conlon um, and I invited them to join us. My thanks to two councillors especially, Councillor Cliff Hughes, Councillor Jane Bell who also joined the board. Um, we hit the ground running, our first meeting was in January uh, this year and the last meeting was as late as last Friday. Last Friday the government have confirmed that we've got an extra £750,000 which should be with us by the 30th of September which is today and we're going to use that to buy some land in the central Ireland to, to develop. Uh, I'd like to personally thank all the board for all, all the hard work they've done. There's as many people attending the board meetings now as there was right at the beginning. So support has not, uh, has not dropped off at all. Uh, the, the investment plan that you've got in your paperwork, the 48 pages of it, is a working document, so it's still, we're, we're fetching the latest draft of it to you. It has to be into the government by the end of this month. So I'd, I'd like to move the five recommendations in the report, and I'd also like to invite Jennifer Gadston, who's a partner at Birchall Blackburn Law, who should be dialing into us tonight, who's the chair of the town board, and she'll explain the investment plan a bit more. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Catherine. And can I welcome Jennifer, if she's... Are you there virtually? I thought I saw you I a little while ago. Yeah. Hello, Jennifer. Hello. <laughs> um, so, yeah, good evening, everyone, and, and thank you very much for inviting me to speak to you this evening. And um, thank you, Councillor Evans, for the introduction. Um, as Councillor Evans said, my name is Jennifer Gadsden and I've been admitted as Chair of the Town Deal Advisory Board. And I'm here tonight to share with you the vision of the board and what we hope the Town Investment Plan is going to be able to achieve in the future. As mentioned, Leyland's been identified as one of these 101 towns that can bid for £25 million of, of funding to invest in the town. The, the board was assembled to represent the interests of the residents and the business community in Leyland and myself and the members of the board have been working over the last few months to, to bring together this vision for Leyland and um, that has resulted in the draft investment plan that, that you've all received. So from the early meetings of the board it, it was clear that we all agreed that Leyland needed an identity it was felt that the lack of a clear centre and no distinct sense of purpose meant that Leyland wasn't fulfilling its potential and it, it identified that the town's fund could help provide that identity through this once in a lifetime opportunity. 
just to share with you, our vision was really to create a new centre for Leyland that would become a hub for, for residents to come to in their spare time and that would attract workers to the area. We started off with quite a long list of ideas um, and we've narrowed that down to a short list that the board considered would really make a, a difference to Leyland. These shortlisted ideas can essentially be broken down into three areas, which you will see from the, the draft plan that you have. The, the three areas are a, a skills and startup hub, the market regeneration and town centre transformation. Our thoughts were that a new skills and startup hub would create facilities to support business startups and skills development. And the idea is that this is going to be a new building which will be located by the existing market and it will really allow enterprises to, to thrive in that building. Within the plan is a list of, of what is, is we are proposing to go on each floor of the building, which will give you more of an idea of how we envisage that, that this is going to work. So it, in conjunction with that, we then looked at regenerating the existing market that was there in the hope that this would develop local leisure and retail offers, as well as putting new residential building opportunities in, in the surrounding area. The market would be developed both internally and externally and would be transformed um, into creating new opportunities for existing traders and new businesses. And then finally, the town trend centre transformation was to create a vibrant town, a vibrant town centre through public realm works. And again, there was, if you look in the plan, you can see where there's residential development um, incorporated into that. And, and our vision as the board was that these three shortlisted ideas can bring Leyland into the 21st century. And not only will the look and perception of the town, town be transformed, but the new building will give space for local people and businesses to learn and grow together. And the board considers that these three projects will help Leyland to really develop its identity and it can become something that residents and business community can be, really be proud of. We're now going through a stage of putting our ideas out into the community and asking for feedback and, and a consultation period with the residential and business community. Um, and we hope to have the, the results of that soon. So I, I hope this has given you some ideas as to, to the background of the plan and what our view as the board is for the future. Um, but I'll, I'll stop talking now and I'll, I'll leave you to discuss the plan and, and any questions anyone may have. Um, Councillor Foster, do you want to I'm happy to, and, and whilst Jen's on, and I see, I noticed uh, Jonathan Nodes online as well, um, dialed in. Um, Jennifer, on behalf of the council, thank you for your work. You've done an absolutely tremendous job chairing the board. Not easy, I know. Um, and to get us to where we are today with the bid is, is unbelievable. Um, it really is unbelievable. We've got a fantastic bid going to government and let's all hope that we do get allocated the funds because it will be a once in a lifetime transformation of Leyland. Um, as you know, Jennifer, we, we spoke with the MP uh, late last week as well, uh, with, with, with Catherine Fletcher and it's, look, it's looking good. It's looking good. We're hopeful that the quality um, of the bid is just where we need it to be. Jennifer and the team and, and Councillor Bill Evans and Jonathan have been speaking constantly to, to government as well about this. And so let, let's do it. Let's do it for Leyland because this is, as I say, a once in a lifetime opportunity to transform Leyland. And again, Jennifer, on behalf of the council, thank you. Thank you for your work. And I'm happy to second the proposals. Thank, thank you, you. Councillor. Now, are there any questions from any members of the council? Councillor Ogilvie. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, I uh, welcome this report. It's uh, it's good to see that things in Leyland are, are looking as if they can can improve going forwards. Um, Councillor Evans said you didn't understand why Leyland was chosen. Well, I can tell you why Leyland was chosen. Seymour Kennedy, the then Conservative MP for the area, spoke to the Conservative government. And the Conservative government agreed with her view that Leyland should be one of the chosen towns. So that deals with that. But coming to the report itself, um, 
I was a little bit unclear on the land acquisition aspect of it, but you've partially answered the question by mentioning the £750,000 of extra funding that you've just received. Um, obviously, the acquisition of the land is critical to the plan as shown in this report going forward. Um, is all of that 750k going to be sufficient to acquire the necessary land? Um, there presumably is a risk that we may be outbid for said pieces of land. Um, so I just wondered really what's the level of confidence that this plan can move forward on the basis of us acquiring the necessary land at the earliest possible juncture. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, I'm, I'm glad they have picked Leyland, uh, because what we do need is a, a good kick up the bum and, and get some investment into the town. Uh, negotiations are taking place about two pieces of land in Leyland that we are, which are joined the market, and uh, we're hoping that we're, uh, we, we, we can get somewhere with it. The £750,000 wasn't a definite. We had to write back to the government to say what we wanted to spend it on before they would release it to us, and they've now released it, so they must be happy with what they want to spend it on. We're not so sure it's going to be enough, but there are there is some money in our capital reserves that we can, can use to prop it up. But uh, I think that answers your question. Right, I've got uh, Councillor Matthew Tomlinson. Um, thank you, Mayor, and uh, congratulations on your new position. And I hope you have a wonderful 18 months. That doesn't sound right, but um, 18 months it will be. And I hope you thoroughly enjoy it. You'll certainly bring a bit of colour to the borough. Um, as one of the dwindling number of councillors who was around uh, when the Leyland Master Plan of 2005 was drawn up, can I just say I wholeheartedly welcome this report coming to council. And do you know what? I don't care where the money comes from. I don't care about the motivation behind it. I don't care who said what to who. If we get this money, we can transform our town. It's long overdue. And we have been talking about it. Um, I know Councillor Mrs Green is watching from home. Um, she speaks about this passionately whenever she can, because it was one of the first things when she got elected to council. We had all the plans, we had a working group, and then the dreaded long grass came along. Uh, nothing ha ever happened. It's long overdue. I'm bullishly confident, and you know, you listen to the comments of the leader um, and the discussions that we're having with government. I'm quite bullishly confident that this time, this time, something's going to happen. Um, and I absolutely welcome it, and I really look forward to it. Well done, well done to everybody involved. Uh, Councillor Titherington. Uh, well, I'll be brief because I was going to say similar to uh, what Councillor Tomlinson said, because I think he, I, uh, Councillor Forrest, uh, Councillor Mary Green, uh, were on the working group that uh, de developed the master plan back in 2005. And I suppose um, it's better late than never, but we've been waiting uh, 12 years. So um, I just think that this is uh, an opportunity here that we've been given. Uh, I commend all those that are on the board and who've been uh, part, and the officers who've been uh, part of putting the uh, uh, the bid together. I wish you every success. Um, and I, in relation to the the land that Council Ogilvy was referred to, I think that was in the original uh, master plan that we would purchase that land and, and build on it. And I think it is. Uh, that particular land is fundamental to the success of the regeneration of Leyland. So uh, congratulations to everybody who's been in there. I hope to be adding the congratulations even further uh, when, we, when we win the bid. But uh, I don't think there is anybody uh, within the chamber who, who could not support uh, this. Thank you. What's the next? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, I've, I've been listening to what uh, people have been saying about, and it's uh, they mentioned the master plan of 2005. 
uh, it's been it's obviously uh, long overdue. Uh, I'm just wondering with the the recent pandemic uh, and the COVID, the acceleration of the technology where people are, are working, um, changing working conditions, less travelling to work. I'm just wondering if if we've uh, taken into consideration what what the working environment and people's lives will be like once we do get back to some normality. Um, the technology is going to be extremely important. I, I, I uh, visualise people will be working more from home, as we have been doing now. I think people will maybe be reluctant to go back to the office, uh, so there will probably be less demand for office space, for example. Maybe there will be more demand for quality accommodation with the working environment within it, um, you know, like an office based at home type environment. I just wonder if some of these considerations have been made. Um, this has come upon us just over the last six months. It's, it, it, you know, it's, it's, um, I'm just wondering if fast forward five, ten years time, uh, the, you know, things will be different and whether we've taken that into account uh, on our scheme. Thank you. Can do, Mayor. Yes, as you can see from the investment plan report, there's, there's three areas that we've looked at. There's this new building that's going to be a three story building but with some roof space and it's for community use. There'll be a cafe on the ground floor, drawn about a recording studio and on about community use in the place. So, uh, COVID 19 has been taken into consideration with this. There's other buildings planned. Um, there's a couple of bars and restaurants next to it with uh, up-to-date modern accommodation above it and also um, there's, there's other apartments for on the other side of the road behind the United Reform Church. So um, yeah, we the, the idea is, is to generate interest into the town into the town centre. The, the market car park as is at the moment would move and that would become the market square and we'd have extra market stalls outside, probably wooden ones with flats that open up and you can buy food and whatever else. So it would expand the market. Uh, there's also plans to, to do up off lane and uh, have more street scenery, uh, trees, benches, you know, and encourage, encourage more people to, to, to come there. And also uh, do some work on the, on the market building itself the roof is leaking. It's an old Lella Motors building. We don't want to lose it. We, we want to restore it and, uh, and, and get it better used. So yeah, there's, there's, there's plenty of interest being generated. We had a board meeting on Friday afternoon and the consultants had responded back to us. The uh, consultation it was still ongoing then and we'd had over 1,600 responses. Vast majority of them very positive. We, we weren't having responses from people saying, oh yeah, this will never go ahead and all that lot. It, it, we, we got loads of responses saying, flipping heck, about time, you know, get, get going with it and everything. Again, the, the, the consultation was due to finish on Sunday, but we had discussions on Friday about extending it a little bit more. So I'm not so sure where we're up to with that at the moment, but like I said, we've had 1,600 responses. And uh, so it's, uh, you know, we must be doing something right. Thank you, Mayor. I'm just wondering if, Jonathan, do you want to add anything to the points that Councillor Bretherton was making or not? Am I throwing that at you and you're going to say, Mr Mayor, don't do that? Or Mrs. I can refer to myself as anything. I could be old Mother Hubbard if I want. <laughs> Jonathan? I, I, yeah, I, I think Councillor Evans has pro probably co covered it all. Um, yeah, yes, we, we, we've debated long and hard whether the proposals are, are COVID proof in it, uh, if if you like, and and we very much think think they are. Um, what what we're seeing nationally is is that um, local centres, the size of Leyland, are actually are actually receiving a lot of footfall at the moment, and it's city centres that are really suffering. So I, th I think there's a real opportunity for for Leyland to seize the opportunity um, at, at, at the moment. Um, just in terms of negotiations on the land, yes, they are ongoing. Obviously, the the commercially confidential at the moment, so we can't really say say too much about that. But um, all, all signs are positive at the moment, I guess. But um, I've just got something to say. Could I just say, if you've got sweets, you should have enough for everybody. 
you know, we should all have a suite. It was it. Have you? Well, that's all right. They didn't get to front, did they? We never got a suite. Right, so just think on next time. So I just saw it out the corner of my eye. They're all eating sweets. I do apologise to people watching on YouTube. It's a much more serious meeting than I ever, you know. So, um, Councillor Margaret Smith, you're the next person on my list. Thank you, Mayor. First of all, um, could I thank um, Jennifer uh, on behalf of the Conservative Group uh, for all your hard work and for getting involved in the uh, town bid. Uh, I'm sure it has been a huge learning curve to, to suddenly be thrust into something like this, but um, you sound like you've done a superb job uh, and we do thank you very much for that. Um, I'm very pleased that there are ongoing negotiations now uh, and they do seem to be um, making some progress uh, as Councillor Titherington remarked um, that land is central to what we've always thought would be the regeneration of the centre of Leyland uh, and we have tried over a great number of years to actually get into negotiations with people to actually purchase that land but it wasn't to be at the time uh, but it does now look like things are going forward and that is to be welcomed um, very much indeed um, and I think that's a fantastic thing. I've read this report with a great deal of interest um, and I think it's a very interesting report um, and there's a lot to be commended to it and, and we wholeheartedly support it and do hope very, most sincerely that we do get the 25 million um, that is hopefully on offer still from the government, even though they spent billions uh, over the last few months. But hopefully these uh, deals are still there to be um, bid for. I'm just wondering, and perhaps uh, Councillor Evans can tell me, because I'm not 100% um, okay with the deal uh, and the original criteria, um, whether there is just a certain amount of um, bids that will go in that will be um, accepted or will all of the ones that were offered um, a bid um, be accepted? So is there a small part or is everybody going to be able to get in there if, if everything is put in place that is correct? And I presume the criteria um, and that's the other thing that just have a slight concern. Um, I did speak to um, Mr Nodes about it yesterday and I know it is a bit difficult to actually talk about it um, because of the sensitivity of it um, but I am concerned that the unique leisure facility when I read it I assumed it was in the centre of Leyland I'm now informed that it isn't um, so I'm worried about that that it may be that it won't meet the criteria of the bid because this is for the centre of Leyland, it is to regenerate the Leyland centre um, and that's the whole point to it. Um, and I'm trying to be very careful how I phrase my words, but if you understand where I'm coming from. Thank you. Uh, can I just reassure Councillor Mrs Smith that um, we're not bidding against each other on this. The government have said there's £3.6 billion pound there. They've they've given the 101 towns uh, three different uh, times to bid. They could either bid in July, bid in October, or bid in, I think it's January, the, the, the next one. We, we, we looked at the timescales and we thought we could meet it in October, so we're, we're aiming for the end of October. All is not lost then. If we miss the deadline in October, I, I believe you get a second bite of the cherry that we can we can do it at a later date. But at this moment in time, we're on track. So at the end of this month, it's 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 going. Uh, what was the other? Oh, right. the leisure facility. Can can I not answer that at this moment <laughs> in time? And can I can I? I'll, very careful and I just thought it would be better can if I, I don't. Can I refer it to agenda Pardon. item 22 yeah. tonight yeah. if that's okay? Yeah. yeah. Right. Thank you. I think that's it. Miss. Uh, thank, thank, thank you. Is it? Well just to finish up then. Is, it, is there anybody else? I've got Councillor Green that wants to say something so 
to Councillor Green or to Michael Green? Is it Michael? Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, yeah. well, well, as councillors, we're all the other towns up and down the country are struggling, uh, and I've been doing for years uh, due to impacts upon the retail sector before COVID even affected any of us. Um, but but I welcome this as, as a great opportunity uh, to potentially bring a significant amount of funding into Ireland um, from the government, and, and I thank Seema Kennedy, our former MP, for, for putting us on the map in that regard. And I'm sure Catherine Fletcher will pick up the baton and, and, and is already doing everything she can uh, to secure improvements for us. My only not disappointment, um, which, which I hesitate to really want to be positive on this item, but my not disappointment, Mayor, is, is that the members of the Wayland and Farrington, my neighbourhood, club have not been consulted directly on this plan, uh, which would have been helpful, I think, at an earlier stage. Nevertheless, I, I will be fully supporting this plan this evening as, as it does present the opportunity to, to build upon the previous improvements to the town centre. Uh, can, I, can I particularly thank the council officers and uh, can I thank uh, Ms Gadsden for the work she's done and for speaking to us this evening and for all the members of the town board for their work on the plan. Um, I did have a look at the interactive presentation online uh, as well, and I've got to say that, that was quite impressive in the way that that operated, so the company that, that put that together should be commended. I, I would urge everybody involved to, to, to underestimate the things that Councillor Breverton made earlier. I, I do think that the government will place significant regard on being post-COVID uh, friendly, if I can put it that way. So, so I think that should be played uh, and we need to have a strong argument to put to government regarding that. Um, could I end by just um, making a few queries to the Cabinet member on his opinion on, on some matters? Um, firstly, um, does he feel that the plan pays sufficient regard to our strengths with regard to advanced manufacturing? Does it place sufficient weight on improving sustainable transport routes into the Leyland area and into the town centre? And finally, will the plan provide the step change that Leyland truly needs? Thank you very much and I wish everyone well uh, on this and uh, let's work together to make it happen. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Green. Could I, could I just pick up a point about the the forum, the Leyland and Farrington Forum? Both Councillor Evans and myself are on the board and we are both Leyland councillors and rest assured we have been fighting the corner. It has not been part of the process to consult councillors at this point, they have almost been discouraged from being on the on that particular board. It is very much about local businesses and local interest, and we are we we are on it one because he's planning, and two because I'm the chair. I was and uh, the chair of the Leyland Forum, and we are both Leyland councillors. Rest assured, you know our interests of Leyland have been very much to the fore. Uh, thank you anyway. Thank you, Councillor Evans. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, thanks, Councillor Green, for your questions. Um, we would have been back to the neighbourhood forum or the neighbourhood hub as it is now, had it not been for COVID-19 and they've not been meeting. We would have had the we had displays that would have been uh, at the meeting, so you, you could have had some input earlier had we not have been in the situation we're in. Um, do I think the uh, the you know the, the bid's good enough and everything? Well, we've had somebody from the office of the Ministry of Housing, Communities, and Local Government has been sitting in on the board meetings with us. We've also had Catherine Fletcher in on most of the meetings. The ones she couldn't get to, she's had her office dial into. So there's always been some representation from our member of Parliament, and she's been talking to the ministers at Westminster and is very positive about where we're going. Advanced manufacturing, yes, we've been talking to uh, BAE Systems and Leyland Trucks and other organisations. They're very interested in coming on board with us and having some form of support, if you will, in this community building. Uh, probably, you know, smaller businesses who actually support them and uh, be able to recruit people or, uh, you know, work from this building. So, yes, that has been taken into consideration. It's in the report, actually. 
Um, as far as transport, sustainable transport, yes, we've talked to the, the, the consultants have talked to bus companies. We're, we're looking at different ways of cycling in and out of the town and altering off lane to make it um, one way from McDonald's roundabout to the Gables roundabout and having like bus laybys and, and things like that so as not to hold the traffic up. So all this lot has been, to, you know, has been discussed in such a short period of time. You never, <laughs> you, 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 you wouldn't think that we only started this lot off in January and the bid's going to go in the next few weeks. Um, the your last point about step change, well, something needed to be done. I, I mean, I've lived in Leyland all my life and I remember the good old days when we had Leyland motors and, uh, you know, both sides of flame was, was uh, factories. As, as was Farrington, as was the Spiria Works, and we had BTR, we had the L&B Rubber Company, the Leyland Paints, there was all sorts of industry in there and it's, it's, it's died. There's no night time economy at the moment, so that's another thing we, we're interested in doing, kicking off that. Um, but back, back to this tonight, I, I've, I've said thanks to the board already, because they've done, a, Jennifer and the team have done an absolutely fantastic job. But we also can't forget all the backroom boys, all our officers and all, all the other people, that, the consultants that we've been involved with, who have all worked hard and they've all come together and it's all it's all just gelled well. Do you want me to read the recommendations out, Mayor? Yes, Oh, we've got one more. Councillor Watson. Councillor Watson. Sorry, thank you. No. It's working. There we go. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, and congratulations once again on your new position. Um, just a brief contribution um, on the subject of boiled sweets. I do have a full packet here. And if you do wish to have some or anyone does, uh, there's a lot of mint humbugs here. They're locally sourced. I'm afraid they weren't locally manufactured. Um, but apologies to anyone who's virtual. I can't supply to them. Share it with sweets. Oh, oh, yeah, Councillor Clark. Right. Councillor Clark. <laughs> sorry. And you can't have any sweets because you're all at home. I'm all right for sweets, Ma. Oh, God. I'm so pleased, Colin. <laughs> uh, I can recall also uh, in 2005 the, the master plan uh, which was produced, and um, I'm glad to see that progress has been made at, at long last. And Jennifer, it's, it's quite an excellent report. Thank, thank you very much. I can remember in 2012 when I was a mayor, I went round quite a number of events in the Leyland area. And one of the burning questions that people asked is, what on earth is happening to Leyland? Why doesn't it get improved? And I said, well, there's a master plan. Hopefully something in the near future will come forward. Well, here it is today. Uh, I had a number of questions, but they've been answered by by uh, Councillor Evans and, and Jonathan. But just just my last question, very quickly, is um, I was looking at the the financial comments which have been made, um, and uh, the, qu the question I've got is a simple question. Basically, is if uh, if these recommendations go through tonight, um, will there be any financial risk to the council? If the uh, the bid fails, that's the only thing I want you to know. Thank you. Right. And shall I go on to Councillor Smith? Councillor Smith, what do you want, Bill? Bill, do you want to respond to that one? Right. Okay. Uh, Councillor Phil Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, mine's a fairly straightforward one, really, and it and it's, um, absolutely welcome the report, and um, it's uh, most of it is 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 pretty good, and we're sure it hopefully will be successful. Um, one of the, one of the things has already been pointed out, which are these two pieces of land that um, have been landlocked, I suppose, for for long enough, and the council has been trying to buy these pieces of land um, <clears throat> for a number of years now. Um, is the is the opportunity now there for buying these pieces of land and have they opened up negotiations and negotiations moved on a little bit i mean it, it is very very critical it always was critical um <clears throat> to the regeneration of leyland so if the cabinet member can just tell us whether things have moved on in that direction without actually giving any secrets away thank you <clears throat> 
Thank you, Mayor. Uh, concerning the, the financial uh, issues, when we first got invited to bid, the government gave us £162,000, and that was to be used to support the, the town board, and putting it together, uh, admin, officer time, meeting room, hire, stuff like that, of which we got. So we've had £162,000 and we haven't spent it all yet. Most of it, yes, but... Then on Friday, we, we got a notification that, yes, we've been successful with the bid for the 750000 But the, there were originally two play, two issues that we, we applied for. We wanted to have some money to do up the ticket office at the railway station, and we also wanted to buy the land. Uh, the, the costings were a lot more than the 750000 so we considered with the ticket office is in abeyance at the moment, and the uh, the two pieces of land are our main consideration. Uh, negotiations are ongoing. Our offices are working hard at it, and I can't tell you whether it's within the seven hundred and fifty thousand or not. But um, if it isn't, we're going to have to find money from somewhere else. Uh, if the bid fails. Will we suffer? Well, no, not really, because we've been given this money already. And uh, we just might end up with two pieces of land that we can't develop. But, but if you look at the way this is working, we've got officers from the ministry supporting us. We've got a member of parliament supporting us. Uh, the government keep giving us money. All, all this lot's not for, for nothing. You know, there's, there's obviously something... Okay, the, the, the other thing I forgot to mention tonight is the uh, the 25 million. It's for a bid up to 25 million. Hopefully we will get the full amount, but it might be a lesser amount. And then we'd have to, you know, work our case differently to, to spend what, what money we had. On the master plan, when we, we, we've mucked around with this in Leyland, like, like it's been mentioned earlier, since 2005, when we took over as an administration uh, 18 months ago, we put it on our priority to get going with the, the master plan, and we did. Uh, within 12 months, we had the master plan uh, up and running. We'd gone out to consultation with it, and then all of a sudden, the government comes along and says, oh, we've got this town deal. So the, it, everything just slotted into place. You know, it, it, we, we've gone all those years and not getting anywhere, and now there's a lot of momentum picked up on this, and, it, you know, because we had a master plan and because it was supported by, by the residents, uh, it looks like that uh, it's, you know, it's supporting the town, well, it is supporting the town deal. So, thanks everybody for your questions. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Rainsbury. Yes, thank you, Mary. It's uh, just when I sat there listening to this, I was just, think, just thinking about it, you know, the development of Ellen as such, and it's, Obviously, it's the, the centre and the hub of, uh, of uh, Sap Dribble and uh, the city centres in Leyland are there. However, I think uh, it may not be within the board's remit, but have they considered the, the transport for the, the areas of uh, Sap Dribble, which are really precluded from attending Le Leyland because of the lack of uh, public transport? I don't know, I went tonight for myself, had I not got a vehicle, I would have had to go to Preston to catch a second bus to come to Leyland. There's no, no public transport between the Western Parishes and the Civic Centre or the Leyland Centre. I know a lot of people would like to and prefer to shop in Leyland if they could. Not everybody's got cars. I know uh, it's, it's a rural area and most people do, but not everybody but he does have cars. And it has been mentioned in the past this, you know, that they've got to go to Preston to come to the Civic Centre for any queries. So certainly with the development of Leyland, would it, uh, like I say, I don't know if it's in the remit, remit of the board, but to have they consider this? Thank you. Bill, do you want to? Thank you, Mayor. Yes, as I, I answered Councillor Green's question earlier on, we've been talking to the bus companies and the taxi companies, and we've also been looking at cycleways around, uh, around Leyland. So, no, the, the bus companies have been very positive with us, to be fair. Uh, they've commented on what style of like bus stops and laybys they want, and we, we've incorporated that into, into our plan as well. But yes, you're right. Uh, since 
buses were deregulated, everybody seems to be just going for the profitable routes now, and the non-profitable ones just seem to have died off. But hopefully if we get enough footfall into Leyland, then the bus companies will, will support us. Uh, right, Mr. Mayor, do you, is there any more? Else, what, any, I've not got any more on my list. Hmm? I think we'll move to the vote. I think we'll. I knew this would go on a bit because it's really the first time we've had, we've we've really seen this in council. Um, can I just say because I'm on the on the on the on the board and it is fascinating stuff. I've got I've got my head around. Can I at this point say thank you, Jennifer, for being here? I'm sure you've had a wonderful time visiting us. Yes, you can come again if you want anytime. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> okay, see you at another meeting. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Um, right. Can we take this? Yes, Bill. Oh, yes, you better read the recommendations. Sorry, I'm... So everybody knows what they're voting on. <laughs> the first one, that council supports the draft town investment plan. Second, that council notes the timeline for submission and delegates council support for the finalised plan to its representatives on the town board. That council confirms that the budgets identified at sections 30 to 34 of this report can be used as match as part of the wider programme in the town investment plan. That delegated authority is given to the council's director of planning and property, section 15 officer in consulta consultation with the leader to confirm the council's final support on costs at the point of submission to government. And finally, that Council wishes the Leyland Town Board every success in the bid and subsequent negotiations with governments. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Right, are we going yeah. to the vote now? Yes. Thank you, Members. Um, it, would any member like to indicate whether they would oppose the proposals you have just heard? Uh, in the absence of any opposition, the proposals as put have been passed. Thank you. Thank you. We can progress with that. That's, that's going to be really exciting, everybody. Item 16, questions to the Leader of the Council. Are there any questions for the Leader of the Council from any member? Uh, Councillor Trafford? <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I attended the planning committee meeting in relation to Pickering's Farm. And without going into too much detail, given the nature of it, there was three separate occasions when I felt that the conduct in that meeting was absolutely appalling. So what I'm asking the leader is, is are we getting anywhere in sort of dealing with these issues? Is there perhaps are all three leaders behind on holding um, in taking responsibility for the conduct of members in meetings, uh, especially when it's got such a massive sort of a public attendance as well. I'm quite concerned. So uh, I'd welcome any comments from the leader of the council for that. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, right, Mr. Wright. Monitoring officer. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Councillor. Traffic is probably appropriate uh, for me to, uh, to pick up responding to that. Um, uh, to answer your question, yes, I am dealing with issues that have been raised with me and that I have addressed, uh, and I am in discussions with leaders of all the groups about that. Thank you. Is that satisfactory, yeah. Councillor? Yeah. Thanks, Mayor. I, I won't um, thank you for the question, Councillor Trafford. Um, one of the things that's concerning me, um, Mayor, over the last few months is that the, the officers of this council and many of its members are working 24 7 dealing with covid as we should be and it's been challenging and it's been difficult what i've noticed is generally council trafford there's been particularly over the last two or three months conduct of some members isn't as it should be and the last thing we need as a council is a spike as we have now in complaints about the conduct of members it's the last thing we need all these meetings that we are now in, in the COVID age, were live on YouTube. After the council meeting that was Councillor Trafford mentioned, before I'd even got home, there was an email in the inbox from a member of the public complaining about conduct of councillors, and it's just not on. I've also noticed in recent governance meetings, banging of desks and raising of voices to officers in debates, which just isn't on. Um, in answer to your question finally as well, Councillor Trafford, as leader of the Labour group, 
we don't accept inappropriate behaviour of members and that's how it is and that's how it always is and I've commented back as much to the monitoring officer. Please, can all members remember that we're all here to serve our community and we cannot go back to how things were two years ago. Please. Thank you. And thank you for your question. Thank you, Councillor Foster. Uh, Councillor Howarth. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Since our last full council meeting where we uh, discussed and debated um, a combined authority and um, local uh, elected mayor for Lancashire, uh, there's been a bid put forward to government um, to abolish South Ribble and create unitary authorities. Um, could the leader update us on the latest position regarding local government reorganisation and in particular what consultation, if any, has taken place with local councils and residents? What information about these mergers has been uh, distributed to local households? And if any public meetings or any meetings of any other sort have been called where residents could actually uh, express an opinion? Do you want to answer that or do you want the next? Uh, there's another question. Carry on. Yeah, it's right. simpler. I'd prefer to answer them on at the time, if that's okay. Thanks for that, Councillor Howarth. Um, two separate issues, I'll answer the, and I'll split them, split them down. So clearly, Council will recall that we agreed to the, um, the creation of a combined authority and elected mayor to recent Council meeting. Uh, that's the case. Um, that case has been put forward to Government, and we've heard nothing since. Nothing. Secondly, and extremely disappointingly, Lancashire County Council Conservative Group have put forward proposals to abolish every district council in Lancashire. Councillor Green, who sat on the meeting today, is on the Cabinet, has supported proposals to abolish this council. And I find it unbelievable that Councillor Green is still sat in the South Ribble Conservative Group of this council, a council he's seeking to abolish. I find it astonishing, Mr Mayor. If Councillor Green and the other county council, Lancashire County Council Conservative members don't want to be part of South Ribble, then resign. There has been no dialogue with the district councils from Councillor Green and his colleague and the leader, Councillor Driver, they submitted their proposals to government without our consent or knowledge. It is also my understanding Councillor Driver and Councillor Green haven't even got the consent of the County Council for their proposals. Since the proposals were submitted to government, You'll all be aware that the local government, one of the local government ministers, resigned. Um, I am aware, again, that Lancashire County Council Conservatives were pushing hard to get us in the first tranche of reorganisation to prevent any county elections in May next year taking place. And my understanding <coughs> is this won't be the case. That whatever happens, we won't be in the first tranche of reorganisation. I say again to all councillors in South Ribble, if you don't want South Ribble to flourish, if you don't want South Ribble to continue, then resign. Thank you, Mayor. Councillor uh, Lomax. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you, you'll be aware... Sorry, Chris. Can, uh, Councillor Howard first. He wants to come back oh, on that one. Sorry, Chris. Yeah, thank you. Um, yes, I would like to come back and I'd like to uh, thank Councillor Foster for that because one of the reasons for um, asking this question um, is that in my collection of political leaflets, I have one here, Common Sense from Moss Side Conservatives, uh, distributed by Councillor Michael Green, who's now one of the protagonists of abolishing South Ribble and setting up unitary authorities. And in this leaflet, he tells us how uh, he and the Conservative team stopped South Ribble from being sold down the river to Preston, how he fought a determined campaign by calling for a referendum so residents could decide if they wanted the merger, 
delivering information about the merger to every home and speaking to many local residents to obtain their views, attending four public meetings to listen to the views of the hundreds of local residents who attended, and speaking and voting against the merger at every opportunity. Does the leader um, welcome, along with me, um, Councillor Green carrying out all of these measures again given his proposed merger now that not only wants to sell us down the river to Preston but wants to sell us down the motorway to Skelmersdale and Rivington as well. Councillor Foster. Uh, uh, thanks Mayor. Um, I, I'm just astonished um, Councillor Howard like you what on earth is going on here. Um, Councillor Green for many 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 years that I've known him has always been very protective of South Ribble. I don't know what's going on, Councillor Howarth. I do not know what's going on. All I can tell you is I repeat what I say. Any councillor that's working now actively to abolish this council should play no part in this council, in my view. Thank you. Councillor Lomax. Councillor Lomax. Thank you, Mayor. Congratulations. I think you're going to be great, Mayor. Now, as you know, I'm only a novice at this game and I don't always understand uh, what's happening. But I had um, something pushed through my door, something called Community News, uh, which apparently is an unbiased uh, newspaper politically or leaflet should I say um, although when I mentioned this in private to conservative uh, group members they actually burst out laughing I don't know why that is but as I say I don't always understand uh, and there's a question in here uh, which doesn't ring true to me and it says question the large rusty bins have been removed from the footpaths on station road Bamber bridge and replaced with benches. Can you please let me know who was responsible for removing the rusty bins so I can thank them? The rusty bins were asked to be removed uh, and benches to be put there by the old Eastern My Neighbourhood Committee. Then it lists all the Conservative members who were on the committee and then all the Labour members, not even in uh, alphabetic order. Uh, Conservatives always seem to come first in this publication. But that's not how I remember this happening. Uh, I, I seem to remember working quite hard as, at this. I just wonder what the leader could throw on that. Thanks, Mr. Foster. Thanks, Councillor Lomax. Uh, my recollection is that um, upon you being elected as the councillor for Walton Dale, back in May 2019 and then subsequently the chair of the community hub as it now is. Um, you dealt with this with the local Bamber Bridge and Waltonydale councillors and you removed all the rusty bins off Station Road after about two and a half years of the previous administration trying to do it. So um, as for the community news, you know, it's, um, it's a publication members are free to publicise what they wish. What I would suggest to all members is though anything they do publish needs to be perhaps accurate. Thank you. Hope Thank you, Councillor Foster. Councillor Michael Green. Thanks, Mayor. Um, can, I, can I thank Councillor Atworth? Um, it, it's r rather um, complimentary that he actually keeps a, re a copy of all leaflets that are going out. So. So next time I need to refer to one, I'll, I'll, I'll ring uh, Councillor Alworth up. I'm sure he can find it quicker than I can. Um, but but with regard to the comments he made... Question. Are you going to ask a question, Mike? It's, it's a right to reply, Mr Mayor. I've been, I've been criticised. No, 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 no. I beg to differ. It's questions to the leader. I have a right to reply and I will frame a question as well, Mr Mayor, if that's OK. All right, I'll let you off this time, Michael, but... Just Thank be careful. You. Thank you. Thank you. Look, Thank Councillor Alworth is absolutely spot on. I did oppose uh, the proposed merger back in 2006. No, I know. Carried out under the Labour Lib Dem administration, of which Councillor Alworth was a deputy leader, and he was absolutely determined to sell us over the river to Preston. I would never support a unitary council that would be dominated by Preston. 
with regard to Alexander Foster's point which he made, would you agree with me that he does not know what my views are on any issues regarding any unitary councils or any other changes to local government structures in Lancashire? He does not know what my views are. He does not know what the views are of my fellow county councillors. So he needs to be careful when he's actually purporting to know what those views are. Thank you, Michael. My, my only views which are clear, Mr Mayor, is that I, I fully support, support a combined authority. The only member, Mr Mayor, that we actually do know that has formally written to the government to request that Santa will be abolished is Councillor Foster himself. I'm going to have to stop. I'm sorry, Councillor Green, I'm going to have to stop you. You're not asking a question. You're doing a bit of grandstanding and I'm not having it. So if you've got a question, by all means ask the question, but do not carry on grandstanding. I'm not going to stand for it. Thank you. Have you got a question? Right, you're going to ask the question. Thank you, Councillor. Secondly, in the second part of Councillor Green's question, if you read the letter, it's absolutely quite clear in there that my preference is for a two-tier system to remain. That's fact. Therefore, what Councillor Green has just said is completely untrue. As for understanding what Councillor Green's view is, I think every councillor here always is confused what Councillor Green's view is on anything because he changes his view depending who he's talking to, depending when there's an election. Councillor Green is a member of the Lancashire County Council Cabinet that have sanctioned, sanctioned the letter that Councillor Driver has sent to government. We're also aware that the Lancashire County Council Conservative Group voted on supporting that vote. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Foster. Uh, I've got Councillor Matthew Tomlinson. Thank you. At this point, I probably ought to declare an interest as a member of Lancashire County Council. I didn't declare earlier because I didn't know this, um, this debate was going to be had. But now that it has started and I'm taking part, I ought to declare that. Um, would the leader agree with me that Councillor Green stating that no one knows his opinion on this, one, is probably um, unlikely to be true, and two, is at least unhelpful for his residents. He is a county councillor, he is a part of the Conservative group, he is known to be extremely close to Councillor Driver, who is championing this change, and if he is indeed opposed to this change, I think it would be very useful for him to voice that opinion loud and clear to stop people jumping to unfortunate conclusions. I have to say, I've jumped to that unfortunate conclusion and I know, in my mind, what Councillor Green's view on this debate is. Thanks, uh, Councillor Tomlinson. I think it would be extremely helpful um, if we knew, because at the moment, Councillor Green is sat as a borough councillor, saying one thing perhaps, sat as a county councillor doing another thing. As I said earlier, Councillor Tomlinson, <coughs> my number one priority is to ensure that South Ribble Borough Council is never abolished. And those that seek to abolish it shouldn't be sat on this council. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, this is the end of this discussion now. It's, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go any further with this. We're now going to move on. And Councillor Margaret Smith, OK? I was going to enter into the debate, but if you're closing it down, my, Miss, uh, I think we've got the Mayor, I, enough. we've got a long meeting and we're already at half past eight. Could I, could I just say one thing? Yeah, I think it's been a very unfortunate little episode. Uh, right, I mean, I'm counting, I've got I've got Phil Smith here. Phil, do you want to uh, very quickly? Yeah, it is an unfortunate ep episode. We seem to be uh, you know yeah. leader questions to the leader of council and turn it into a political debate, right. and that's really thank not you. what it's about. I didn't want to enter into yeah. it. So thank, thank you. you, thank you, councillor. Right, we are now on to questions to members of cabinet, and I'll take these in order. So questions, sorry, somebody, oh, sorry, sorry, Councillor Adams. I didn't see you sitting in the corner. Yes, it is. Sorry, I, I was waving, but it is difficult around that corner. 
Thank you. Uh, as a member on the COVID-19 Business Recovery Working Group, we heard firsthand how critical the financial support which was dis distributed by this council was to every business which applied for it in South Ribble. As we now see an increase in infection rates and uh, hospitalisations, some kind of further restrictions are likely. Can I therefore ask that on behalf of this council, the leader lobbies central government to say that if any further restrictions are, imp are imposed, which impacts our businesses, central government will provide local councils like South Ribble the necessary and sufficient amount of money to distribute to those local businesses that which need it. Businesses are at a critical point uh, in the fight against COVID and central government needs to give councils like us the money to give to them to ensure that they can continue serving our communities. Thank you. Excellent. Councillor Foster. Thanks for the question, Councillor Adams. And before I answer it, I'm, I'm, I don't know if all members are aware that um, Councillor Adams never misses a council meeting. He's part of the business recovery working group under Councillor Flannery. And at the same time, Will's a nurse in the NHS on the front line of the COVID recovery. And on behalf of the council, Will, thank you. Right on the front line. And yet he never falters. And he's still sat here tonight with us representing his community. In respect to the COVID business grants, you're, you're absolutely right. And so there's a, there's a couple of things I've, I've, got, I've got sat here that there's, you know, since the COVID um, crisis hit, we've had over 5,000 inquiries from businesses, 5,000 in South Ribble, of which nearly 1,800 um, were eligible for some form of grant. Um, Jonathan Node and the team have paid out over 20 million pounds to businesses in South Ribble in that period. And I've got a, a, a further update. You'll all recall the discretionary grant we were also provided with. I'm really, really pleased and proud to say, and thank you, Councillor Jay Flannery, for your efforts in championing this, that we've paid out 100% of that discretionary grant by 12 o'clock uh, yesterday, when the government's deadline hit, 100% of the discretionary grant. And I think that's a credit to the working group that was established to deal with this. It's actually slightly over 100%. The chief executive's getting twitchy because we spent 30 quid too much. And that's a fact. So, um, however, you know, moving forward and directly in response to your question, it's gonna be a long, bleak winter for many businesses in South Ribble. And I can assure you we're already on with um, speaking to the government about this and we're just really hope really really um hoping that the chancellor comes good because let's be fair there's been many challenges and many bad decisions during the covid crisis but i think the treasury has done its best to support businesses and i'm happily even uh, to, to commend the treasury for their efforts but yes if we're not careful all this hard work and effort that we've gone to to support our businesses during the pandemic could go down the drain so we've got the working group established now. You need to keep working and keep putting pressure, please, on me and on the cabinet to do what's best for our businesses. Thank you. Thank you. Happy with that, councillor? Good. Right, we will now move on to item 17. Yes, we will. Yes, I'm getting the, I'm getting the nod from the man on my right. Um, I'll take these in order. Uh, so it's the questions for Cabinet Member Health, Leisure and Wellbeing, Councillor Mick Titherington. And there's been a question received for Mick Titherington from Councillor Alan Ogilvie. Now, this has been published and circulated to members in Supplementary Agenda 2, but I believe that Councillor Ogilvie would also like a verbal ask to the question. OK, so can we start with you then, Councillor? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, can I first of all thank the Cabinet Member for the response that you see written in front of you. Um, I sent her an email very early on Tuesday morning and by midday, same day, he had gotten a response back from CERCO uh, to say that they did not think that um, they would be able to recommence the children's gymnastic classes at Leyland Leisure Centre uh, as they'd been in touch with uh, British Gymnastics. Uh, however, in line with uh, 
what Councillor Foster was saying earlier, that you shouldn't always accept no for an answer. I didn't accept no as the answer to that, and I did pose a further question to, um, to Councillor Tillington, if he could establish from CERCO uh, which part of the government restrictions on COVID did they feel that they were unable to comply with that prevented them from recommencing the classes when other organisations in the area have already done so? I wonder if he's got an update from CERCO on that one. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Titherington. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I haven't got any further information. I have sought further clarification uh, from CERCO uh, as to why or how they have interpreted uh, the advice from uh, British Gymnastics. But I would say this, is that um, it's not, for me, it's not for, for me or the CERCO to comment on, on other providers. What I think all members would appreciate and agree is that the safety of users is paramount. And so when you get advice about how you should proceed uh, you know, from the various groups, there is a decision to be made and there are a number of factors to be taken into account. One, of course, is that the desire for uh, people to participate in those activities to be able to get back in and get into that routine. But they've got to be able to do it safely. Um, and so, I mean, there is a call that CERCO have made, uh, and they've said that the advice that they've been given <coughs> from uh, British uh, Gymnastics didn't add up to a safe class structure. Uh, I've uh, sought further clarification in, uh, in response to your response to my response. It's like a country and western song, isn't it? But, um, um, and so, uh, at the moment I get further information from there, i uh, glad to share that with uh, Councillor Ogilvy and any other members who so wish. Thank you. Any more questions for um, Councillor Titherington? No? No. So the next question would be to the Cabinet Member Finance, Property and Assets, Councillor Matthew Tomlinson. Thank you, Councillor Sharples. Thank you, Mayor. The Cabinet Member will recall questioning from Councillor Bretherton at recent meetings of the Council and Cabinet in respect to the Mackenzie Arms site in which he challenges, in his words, the wholly inappropriate decision to construct high-quality Council-owned homes at the site. Subsequent to this, and despite detailed responses from yourself and the Council's statutory officers, he raised the issue yet again at the recent meeting of the Governance Committee suggesting to the external auditors that they should be investigating, in his words, the inappropriate decision that doesn't offer value for money, suggesting, I think, that we sell the houses at a lower design standard to the private sector. As this has again been publicly stated, could the Cabinet Member please yet again explain to Councillor Bretherton and the Conservative Group why their argument is fundamentally flawed and perhaps suggest that an understanding of value for money is required prior to making wholly inaccurate statements. Councillor Matthew Tomlinson. Uh, yes, thank you. I think I'll start off um, by saying I don't think this is Councillor Bretherton and the Conservative Group. I think this is just Councillor Bretherton because the Conservative Group leader, uh, the last Cabinet member, was very clear that they welcome um, this uh, project that we're, here, we're able to deliver and I'm presuming she speaks in general on behalf of her group and I do think with such a flagship project as this it's really useful for us as an organisation as a corporate body if we can all get behind it and offer our support it is a really exciting project um, and it would be so much more useful to us not as a political organisation, but as an organisation that wants to build some respect in the community if the whole council can get behind it. I welcome the opportunity to talk about uh, value for money again, but I'm going to decline that opportunity. I think uh, Councillor um, Balinski-Gelder gave a really thorough um, description of what um, how value for money can uh, be dovetailed with social value. 
I will follow her instructions and refer people to the Government Act that's on the .gov.uk website. And I'm sure if people take the time to read that, they will learn an awful lot. On a general note about governance, we, we talked about governance a lot in council um, recently, um, and we've talked about the difficulties that the council has got itself into over the last five or six years. And I would suggest a lot of that has come from when members ask a question and are given a professional answer and refuse to take that answer on board. Refuse to listen to the professionals whose day job it is to do this kind of thing and then go in public, in public, um, to denigrate the advice they've been given. I'm sorry I find that wholly unprofessional. It's not how a politician should act. And again, the reputational damage to this council, um, well, we've seen what can happen there. I, I, I really do have great concerns about a member suggesting to auditors how they should do their job. Auditors are professional people who will build a plan of action. They will audit where they think audits ought to be done. They will seek advice and evidence as to where they should audit. And if there is anything wrong with this deal, which Council President has been told there is nothing inappropriate about this deal, but if the auditors ought to think there is, then I'm sure they will investigate. At the Cabinet meeting, I thought I was very diplomatic. Um, I sought to draw a line under the saga of the history of the Mackenzie Arms purchase. A purchase... <laughs> A purchase, uh, per perhaps whoever just blew their nose could mute themselves the next time they're going to do it. Um, a, a purchase of a plot of land that subsequently turned out to be worth half of what we paid for it. A purchase of a plot of land to allow us to access a site that we were told was landlocked and then didn't get used for the purpose um, we bought it for. A purchase that subjected us to an overage clause that means we cannot profit from this site until 2032. A purchase that took a place under the previous Conservative administration. I sought to draw a line and I would be happy to never talk about the history of this site again. But if members of the opposition want to keep bringing this into the public domain, I will continue to remind members of the public what we inherited. A derelict site that we couldn't sell on, that had been left idle by the previous administration for five or more years. And now look what we're going to do with it. A flagship project with houses of a standard that you will not find anywhere else in South Ribble in terms of their environmental standards. Houses we can be proud of not as a Labour group, not as a cabinet, but as a council. Council houses that we can be proud of. And if you want to keep nitpicking at that and keep saying it's just not good enough, well, you carry on because every time I get up to speak, I will speak about the land we inherited. As I said, derelict land, land we couldn't sell on, land that we were saddled with and couldn't use for the purpose we were told we were buying it for. I'm really proud of what we're doing. I talk to my Labour colleagues who are now in a position of control at this council for the first time for a long time. I talk to them about legacy projects. I, am, I got elected to do things for my residents. And when I retire, I want there to be physical signs of things that I did and I am proud of. And I say to the whole council that the development at the Mackenzie Arms will be one of those projects that when I'm retired and I'm still hopefully cycling around South Ribble, every time I go past the Mackenzie Arms site, I'll be able to point at those fantastic houses that are providing decent standard living for our residents. And I'll be able to point at it and say, I was involved in that and I'm really proud of it. 
I am proud of it, and I hope that everybody else on this council is proud of it, and we can now move on. Thank you, Mayor. I was going to tell you to move on. You've done more than five minutes. Well done. Um, right, I've got Councillor Bretherton. Uh, uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Sharples, for your comments. Can I refer you to the surveys report, if you could have a look at the documents? Uh, Councillor Bretherton, it's yeah. questions to the Cabinet Member for Finance. Okay. Sorry and all that, but we have to stick to the, the rules. So, if you've got, have you got a question for the for Yes, Councillor yes, I've got a question. Uh, just referring back to the, uh, the minutes of the last Council meeting on the 22nd of July, um, I did ask the question, the meaning of value for money, and at the time you suggested that there was different opinions. I'd like to thank Councillor Foster. I really appreciate the opportunity f uh, you've agreed to provide a learning hour for members uh, on, the, on the value for money. That might clear the subject up. Uh, in, that, uh, in the last minutes, uh, you also uh, made a point that you'd be confident that the project would deliver a re deliver a return. In subsequent meetings, uh, yes, it's definitely a question. Right. Okay. In subsequent meetings, the point about right to buy came up, and again, I asked the question about right to buy, and you can't give me an answer of what is right to buy. Um, the question is, at, which I'll come to at the end is if he still believes that they will offer a return. But before I get to that question, um, the, the, the surveyor's report has put a value cap of £100,000 per home. The cost to build each home will be £153,000. The value is £100,000. Now, the reason why the surveyor has put a cap on that is probably because the, the surrounding houses in that area sell for maybe £100,000. I don't know. Uh, you know, I so, don't want the question here. The right to buy scheme offers a 35% discount on the value. So that will mean that the cost will be £153,000 and the tenants might have a right to buy at 35% less than £100,000. So effectively, the tenants could end up buying them at £65,000. That you've just had two and a half minutes and we haven't had a question. I need okay. the question. We don't need the explanation. Do, does Councillor Tom, Councillor Thompson still agree Thank you. that this project will offer a return despite the fact that there could be an £88,000 loss on each unit should the tenants decide uh, to, to buy? That's the question. Does he still feel that will be a, a return? Councillor Tomlinson. Thank you, Mayor. I, it's very clear that Councillor Bretherton doesn't know me. I know he's new and I accept that. Um, uh, but if he knew me and he knew how I thought about how this council operates um, and the, any of the comments I've made about how this council operates in the past, I'm one of those people who's quite clear uh, and quite honest. A council has to be business-like. A council has to be run on a business-like way, but it's not a business, but it must be business-like. And if he thinks for one minute, I'm going to suggest we spend £153,000 on houses that we're going to end up selling for £80,000 in the very near future, he doesn't know me at all. Am I confident that this will provide value for money? Yes, I am. Am I confident that it will provide a payback? Yes, I am. We're working on all those things, those things not necessarily in the detail. If you wanted to ask me privately and we could chat about it, rather than keep coming to public meetings and denigrating what we're trying to do, then I'm happy to take him through some of the options that we're looking at. He doesn't know me, Mr Mayor, and you can tell. Uh, Councillor Caleb Tomlinson. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, you can't. Uh, would the Cabinet member agree with me that Councillor Bretherton has no idea what a council house is? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Right. Um, I've got Councillor Margaret Smith next on my list. Jane. Jane. All right. Jane. Yeah. Jane. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Yeah. It's all right. We saw. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. We've sorted it. Councillor Kayleigh Tomlinson, I'm sorry. The mayor is in charge of the meeting. Um, it's not appropriate for you to tell somebody else not to speak in that way. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I've got Councillor Margaret Smith and then Councillor Bretherton. Well, everyone else seems to be doing it, so I thought I would. Uh, actually, I was st I'm stretching my legs, if you don't mind. Would Councillor Tomlinson agree with me that at the Cabinet me meeting, I did actually say that I welcome the housing uh, on the Mackenzie Arms. Uh, in fact, I welcome it very much, uh, because prior to this administration taking over, there was plans afoot to build on that land. So while, yes, the land had been derelict for <coughs> some years, we actually had a plan what to do with it on the basis that we weren't going to use it for what its original purpose was. And the reason that we didn't use it for the purpose that we intended was that originally the County Council said that there was no way that we could access the land up um, the Wesley Street and Club Street and therefore the access had to come off Station Road. And that's why the purchase was made of the land of the Mackenzie Arms. Subsequently, that was actually changed and the County Council then allowed the um, access to go through Wesley Street and Club Street. So the, the, the reason is that the reason we are happy that there is housing going on there, and I think Councillor Tomlinson would agree that I actually said I agreed with that. Thank you. Thank you. No question, but never mind. Uh, Councillor Bretherton, now I'm allowing you to come back, but you've got about 30 seconds. I'd like to say that I'm only in favour of council houses and the right to buy scheme. Does Councillor Thompson agree with me uh, that it is extremely good value for money from the tenant's point of view because the tenant will be able to buy at a substantial discount and become a homeowner? Uh, can I just say we're on to 22 seconds, 24 seconds. Do you want to come back on that one? Thank you. Just very briefly. First of all, um, Councillor Mrs Smith, I did acknowledge, you know, I did acknowledge that you um, said you supported this scheme. Not only did I acknowledge it, I welcomed your support and said it's really important we all get uh, behind this. We are very much aware, can I say first of all, I don't support the right to buy scheme. I think it's been a disaster, an absolute disaster. Over 50% of houses that were bought under the right to buy scheme are now in the hands of private landlords. Every single penny that was raised from the right to buy scheme went to the Treasury, not to local councils, and it's decimated, decimated councils across the country's ability to adapt to local housing markets and fill the gaps that have been left by private developers. And that is exactly what we're trying to do. The right to buy scheme has been an absolute unmitigated disaster. Disaster. Are we aware of the right to buy scheme? Absolutely. Are we planning ways that this site will not be affected by the right to buy scheme? Absolutely. Councillor Titherington, but you, you, have you withdrawn? Uh, uh, Councillor Thomas has answered my question. All right, okay. And then I have Councillor Howarth. To drag this out, but um, I've listened to the mathematics of, of Councillor Bretherton's argument, but he seems to uh, not include the rental income that you actually accrue from a rented house. Um, I do. And does the Cabinet member not agree with me that there is somewhat of a dichotomy that you cannot believe in council housing and the right to buy because when you have the right to buy, the council house ceases to exist? No, thank goodness for that. Right. Questions come about many community engagement, social justice and welfare, and Yella Bedlinski Gelder. Anybody got any questions? No, I've nobody on my thing. Thank you. Uh, 
Cabinet Member for Planning, Regeneration and City Deal, Councillor Bill Evans. Anybody got any questions? No? Good. Uh, questions to Cabinet Member Environment, Councillor Susan Jones. Yes, Councillor Ogilvy. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, strangely, I'm going to ask a question. Um, could I could I ask the Cabinet Member, and it's, it's related to the recent consultation uh, and the on Warden Car Park. Um, some of my residents seem to be concerned or confused. Has the 90-minute waiting time already been implemented, and if so, when? It was implemented as a as a, uh, a trial about 12 months ago, and has been and has been carrying on um, since then. We are, as you, as you know, we, we've um, the consultation has now finished, and we will be discussing car parking. At we will be bringing our proposals through to full council in November. Is that all right, Councillor Ogilvy? Yeah, I wasn't sure. Uh, the signs had changed to say 90 minutes, mm -hmm. um, but because it appeared in the consultation paper that, that 90 minutes was being proposed, um, people were thinking that it hadn't been implemented. And I'm already getting anecdotal stories from, from residents that people are rushing out of the park because they've only got 90 minutes. Um, the cafe is saying that People are saying to them, sorry, we haven't got time to use you now. We've got to get back to the car park. So I, via the consultation responses, please take that into consideration. Thank you. Uh, at the moment, we're putting together all the all the the um, comments that have come, including the ones from you, from Councillor Moon and Ca uh, County Councillor Jane Rea, plus all the other comments that have come come in and we will be meeting with the leader and, and the chief executive over the next few weeks to put our final proposals forward. The whole idea of a consultation is that we consult and we, we can change our minds, bearing in mind the comments that people, people have. And we will listen to what people, people say. Okay. Thank you. All right, with that, yeah. can I just mention the sweetest incident? They've got suites on the back row, but we've not made the way to the front row yet. So I don't think I haven't clocked you lot. I've got you sorted. I know you're not really good at throwing. No, I wouldn't if I were you. I wouldn't if I were you. I've just, I've just got it. I've got your number now. Yeah. Uh, right. Item 19. Questions to chairs of committees and neighbourhood areas. Are there any questions for chairs of any committees? Yes, Councillor Martin. I'm going to sit down, Ms. Mayor, so people can hear me better with the microphone. Um, I do have a question for the, the new chair of the, the, the Penworth and Neighbourhood uh, Community Hub. Um, but firstly, uh, as the ex-chair, I, I would like to express my thanks to the officers who supported me and the rest of the group throughout the last five years. Um, I would like to play special tribute to Sue Simpson because she has worked tirelessly, uh, not just for us in, in Penwortham, but also for uh, for the rest of the, the rest of the community hubs or, or neighbourhood forums, as they were with the Bloom. My question to the new. Uh, Chair, is will she accept my congratulations? Uh, would the chair of Penwith like to um, to re answer that question? Councillor Keith Martin, I will accept your congratulations. Thank you very much. Right, any more? Um, yeah, Councillor, thank you. Uh, it's to Councillor Wilkinson, the Head of Governance. I'll ask my question first so I don't get told off. Um, <laughs> Councilor Watkinson, sorry, do apologise. Do apologise. Uh, would Councillor Watkinson bring back the utilities contracts back to governance for a full debate because of the way the procurement process was brought forward? The type of energy the council is using, i.e., is it brown or is it green? And 
I hate to use these words because they've been bandied about in this council chamber tonight really, really badly. Uh, good and bad, have we actually got the best value for money for kilowatt hours? And it's, it's kind of grasped me in this, the way it's been processed and everything like that. So I'd actually like a full debate, this being debated in, in governance, then I'd like a full report bringing back to this council so that it can actually be fully investigated how this was, this was done. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mayor. Councillor Watkinson, are you there? Are I, you? I am here, yeah. Oh, here. brilliant. Have uh, you got an answer to that? Yeah, it's a short one. Thanks for the question, uh, Councillor. If you can write to me, we'll look at that and see if we can see if we can take that forward. Thanks for your question. That. Uh, Councillor Adams. Thanks, Mayor. At our last planning meeting, a proposal from a developer uh, used a loophole in planning law to not honour a previous master plan pledge to create a community or retail space for the benefit of new and existing residents. Due to the loophole, they instead proposed to build 12 or 13 detached houses instead. Well, Councillor Evans, as Cabinet Member, and Councillor Caleb Tomlinson, as Chair of the Planning Committee, ensure that we engage with central government and developers to demonstrate that South River will continue to encourage development. However, we will outline that any development has to be sustainable for the area. And secondly, demonstrate that developers have a duty not just to build more homes, which might generate greater profits, but they also have a res responsibility to build communities which benefit existing and new residents. Thank you. Are you can you answer that, Caleb? Caleb Tomlinson? Uh, yes, thanks, um, Mayor. Um, yes, is the answer to your question, Councillor Adams. Um, Councillor Evans and myself will deal with developers and we will insist that they put community at the heart of development. Thank you, Mayor. I've got Councillor Walton. Thank you, Mayor, and congratulations on your appointment. Uh, my question is to the new chairman of Lale in my neighbourhood, Community Hub, and it was um, a question asked of you at the last council meeting. Um, following on, um, could you give any indication of when we will be having our next meeting, please? Councillor Jaffles, throw you in at the deep end, Councillor. <laughs> Thanks, Councillor Walton, for your question. The answer is no, not at this point in time, but I believe we've appointed some new officers responsible for the various areas, and it's my intention to speak with them in the next few days and organise the first meeting, and I promise I'll get that out to you as soon as possible. Uh, right, any more? Absolutely. Nobody else for any committees? Um, chairs of my neighbourhood, anybody else from my neighbourhoods? No, nope. my neighbourhood. Hubs now, hubs, and we are now on. I keep turning, I keep hitting the microphone. Questions to member champions and representatives on outside body. Now, are there any questions for any member champions? I'm looking. No. Uh, representatives on outside bodies? Any questions for anybody? No, nobody at home. Thank you. We'll move on. We will move on. And we are now on. Right, now this is the part, this is item 20, this is the exclusion of press and public. So, the remaining items are considered to be exempt as it, it contains information relating to the financial or business affairs of any particular person, including the authority holding that information, and information relating to any consultations or negotiations in connection with any labour relations matters arising between the authority or a minister of the Crown and employees of or officer holder under the authority. <laughs> Would somebody like to move the exclusion of the press and public? Thank you, Councillor Foster. Would somebody like to second it? Thank you, Councillor Evans. Um, now, thank you, everybody. And this is where the live stream to YouTube will now end. So we'll just have a minute or two for that to happen. <laughs> 